second because if, if it's gonna last. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Spaced Out Radio tonight. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for joining us. And we want to give a big shout out to Jimmy Church from Fade to Black because I guess he had a good laugh with the bear video with the bear in my neighbor's yard. And he was uh, having a good laugh with that on his show tonight. So thank you, Jimmy, for the shout out on your show. We really do appreciate uh, all the love that we get here, man. And uh, thank you so much for doing that. All right. Tonight, we're going to be talking Bigfoot with Robin McRae. And before we bring her on in, we are going to give a rundown of everybody who is in our chat room tonight. Black Dragon in the gold medal position. The gorgeous Jenny takes home silver. Ufologist in bronze. Jay Fox Hunter, how you doing? Nicola, how, how are you? Sonny Sloan, nice to see you. As we continue on down, Adam Lakatos is here, everyone. He'll be signing autographs after the show. Line up to the left of the studio, if you don't mind, to the left. For Adam, now we continue on. Mama Susan is here. Thank you for coming on in. Grandpa Holland, Jeffrey DeRuin, how you doing? And uh, Mennonite Abe, good to see you. Uh, continuing on here, scrolling on down. SJ, what's happening? How you doing? All right. We're going to continue on here. And where did my guest go? She just disappeared. Sweet Patty B is here, everyone. She'll be signing autographs after the show. Line up to the right of the studio. Just give me one second, Robin. And uh, we'll be all good here. Can you hear me okay, Robin? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm going to just uh, uh, keep you on here. There you are. You can see our lovely guest, Robin, tonight. And <laughs> Chad Smith is here, everyone. The Chad Smith is here. Isn't that something? The Unknown, welcome to our channel. How are you? Good to see you. Nate Rudd, otherwise known as Nate Foot. How are you, buddy? Bonjour, Jean-Baptiste in Edmonton. Good to see you, my friend. Race fan, how you doing? He identifies as Chad Smith, so we always like when that happens right there. And uh, continue on, the gorgeous Block Chic, good to see you. Sean, what's happening? How you doing? JR, good to see you. And uh, let's see, scrolling on down. Uh, uh, there's Super Duke from World Bigfoot Radio, if you haven't signed up the channel yet. Make sure you do. Because uh, we love Super Duke around here. The gorgeous Becky Belling has returned, everyone. Give us a wave, Beck. We'd appreciate that. Becky Belling, by the way, will be signing autographs after the show. Line up to the right of the studio, if you don't mind. Jazz Rabblings, uh, Davey Crotch, how are you? Uncle Dale and his power stash are here. If you're in Austin, Texas, and you see Uncle Dale, rub his power stash for 14 days of good luck, if you don't mind. <laughs> he doesn't mind. Digger Dog, good to see you. Jazz, Ozzy Ozzy, oi oi to you. Vincent Proto, how you doing, buddy? I am loving your memes, man, especially your Merle memes. Those are awesome. Greg Moyes, reborn from Ash, good to see you guys. A.A. Ron and gorgeous Science Melinda are here. Travis DeLuca, it's been a few days. How you doing, buddy? Vanner Smith, good to see you. Bombshell Bomber is back. Eddie Haskell, how you doing, man? Rich Hilke's here, everyone. The Rich Hilke. Peppa H. and Steve Stockton, how you doing, guys? Good to see you both. Michael Morris, nice to have you back. As we scroll on down, and we're running out of time, Fabster, what's happening, buddy? The big bad Fabster. You know, uh, he is uh, he is large and in charge tonight. Large and in charge. Steve Edmond, good to see you, my friend. Robert Moore, nice to have you here. Jello and the best name on YouTube, Dry Toast. Good to see you guys. Apollo 11, Manimal, nice to have you back. Millennium, Wolfman, good to see you guys. Silent Edge, M Manny, nice to have you back here. The Gorgeous Marie in LA, how you doing? And uh, the Jim Christie is here, everyone. The Jim Christie. Gorgeous uh, Christy Belly has returned, everyone. Harvey, nice to see you here. David Pilcher, welcome to our channel, and thank you for uh, listening in from Utah. Really appreciate that. The stunning Tristan Stevens is here. All right, we're going to get going here in about 29 seconds, everyone. I apologize. We had some audio issues here in the studio before we got started. We've got those all fixed up now, and our guest tonight, Robin McRae, we're going to talk uh, some... Uh, 
Bigfoot. And don't forget, the Super Chat is open. It's a great way to support what we do. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Jose and Jim Morris, good to see you guys. Thanks for coming on in. Horns up, everyone. Here we go. From the mountains of central British Columbia to you listening around the world, this, my friends, is Spaced Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. We welcome you to tonight's show on our terrestrial affiliates around North America and digitally on TalkStream Live, Revolution Radio, and KPNL. All of our archives are free by going to youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Do old Davey the favor hit that subscribe button. You can follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Tonight's show is brought to you by Chive Charities. Help make the world 10% happier by visiting Chive Charities today. You can find them on our website. Robin McCrary is the Assistant Director of International Hominology of Forest People, the organization headed by Dr. Igor Burtsev. Robin has had interaction with Sasquatch since she was four years old and has been a guest at Bigfoot conferences as far away as Siberia and all over the United States. She is a founding member of the North American Sasquatchers Alliance for, and, uh, of course, and has appeared on many shows, including several appearances on Super Duke's World Bigfoot <laughs> Radio. That's a channel you're definitely going to want to sign up for if you have it already on YouTube. Robin also loves to get out in the woods, does some field investigations when the situation warrants. And I'm telling you, she is one tough lady. She will brawl for it all with Sasquatch if she <laughs> has to, because that's what she does. Robin McRae, thank you so much for coming on Spaced Out Radio tonight. How are you? I am great. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's such a pleasure. You know, I love this topic. And, and you know, when when Butch, or when or Duke from uh, World Bigfoot Radio says, hey, you got to get this person on, we usually <laughs> listen because he is so... Oh, he's fantastic. Oh, yeah. We got We think the world of, of Duke around here because he... Yeah, he, I agree. ...works his butt off almost every single night. And he's in our chat room almost every single night. So we love him around here. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. I know it's late for you on the East Coast, and here I am on the West Coast. But you know, <laughs> it, it's a pleasure to have you here. Four years old. You were four Well, actually, old. it was earlier than that. Um, my first abduction by the ETs, I was four. Oh, um, okay. it's, so it's, you got aliens, too. There isn't much I don't have. Um, cat people, I've dealt with the goat man. I have a picture of lizard man that was in my backyard, Pukwudgies. Um, the Bigfoots, the dogmen, the ETs that have been continuous most of my life. It, yeah. It, and it, it all kind of ties in together. So everything, yeah, it finds its way to me. I've never ever went out in search of. Why do you think you got this magical ability to have? <laughs> I have yet to figure it out. I have no idea. Um, my mom, even back when I was a toddler, she said, when I first learned to talk, it was talking about my imagine what she thought were imaginary friends, these big beans that were taller than my dad and all covered with hair. Some of them had a tail, some of them didn't have a tail, but that I told her they followed me wherever I went. I mind spoke before I even really could talk. I didn't realize for many, many years that not everybody did it. And I didn't realize that they called it mind speak. When I first heard it called mind speak, a friend of mine was like, well, wait till you get to that point where you can mind speak with them. And I thought, God, I can't wait to do that. That's going to be the greatest thing ever when I can do that. And we're out in the woods and they said, well, tell them such and such. And so I told him and he looked at me and he said, how do you know that? I said, well, they just told me. He said, you can mind speak. I said, heck, I didn't know that's what it was. I've been doing that since I was a baby. Like, <laughs> really, I just didn't know, you know, and I spent most of my life out in the woods with them by myself before I ever got affiliated with um, Igor and started working with him. And I had spoke to 
one person I reached out to because there was just so many experiences. It was just like over the top. And I thought this has got to be going on for other people, not just me. And I reached out to someone and he actually contacted Igor and Igor was in the States for a conference in Ohio. And he called me and he said, you know, do you care if I talk to him about your case? And I said, yeah, go ahead. Called me back. And he said, he wants to come to your house. And he said, I said, well, do you trust him? And he said, well, yeah, Robin, he would never hurt him. I trust him with my life. And I said, well, now you're asking me to trust him with their lives. And that's a whole different ballgame because it, I take the, you know, the whole protection thing to a new level. And he said, no, I promise you, he won't hurt him. So he was supposed to come out for a few hours and he stayed 10 days. He only went home because he already had his airline ticket. And he said, I'm going home, but I'm only going to go if you promise to come to Siberia to the conference. Nice. So that's how I ended up in Siberia. Well, I, I want to ask you, I mean, let's go back to this childhood thing because, I mean, you got some aliens and, you know, old Davy has some aliens too, you know, and, yep. and we, we got that in common. And, and, yeah. then, and then you got all of this Sasquatch stuff coming on. I mean, growing up as a child, uh, Robin, that had to be very difficult because here you are seeing one facet of the world that 98% of the people on this planet do not see. What right. was that like for you? Well, you know, you would think I would have been frightened, but because I didn't know any different, there was, for me, there was nothing to be afraid of. By the time I was four, I was telling my parents about UFOs and ETs and dogmen and stick structures and Bigfoots and that they talked and this is the way they behaved. And my mom and dad are looking at me like they didn't know what to say. And I was very blessed. My parents never were critical. They never said I was making it up. They never said I was lying. They never said I was crazy. All they would say to me is, we can't help you with this because this isn't anything we know about. And I was four. They didn't even have it. Patterson and Gimlin wasn't even had been brought out in the public yet. So there was nowhere for me to get the information that I had. So I was very comfortable with it. What made me uncomfortable was as I grew up, finding out that not everybody knew about it. Not everybody was experiencing what I did. And I would get premonitions on top of it. And I just got to the point where I knew who I could tell things to and who I couldn't. And then as people were around me, they started seeing what I'm seeing. You know, I mean, you can only hide 1,100 pounds of hair for, you know, <laughs> for so well, where, many places. Where, where did you grow up to have this happening? I was in Michigan. I'm in South Carolina now. And we are going to be hopefully within the next year back in Michigan. But it, it doesn't matter where I go. It, it really doesn't. It, it, they show up. Um, I've been sent to Pennsylvania partially by the Bigfoot because there were some ones there that were aggressive that were hurting people. And I went there and dealt with that. Um, I've gone to Tennessee because of a uh, situation that was an issue between the government and the Bigfoots. And I've dealt with that. I've been sent to Texas for a couple of different reasons. I got bluff charged in Texas because there was a group that wanted me to leave my friend's grandchildren and actually leave these children there. And that was like not ever going to happen. And so basically I stood my ground and went between this large male and these three little kids because I'm not going to obviously leave these children. So, I mean, most of the time I don't have to deal with a lot of really nasty ones. Um, that's not, I mean, I can do it and I get called in to do it, but normally most of the ones that I work with are, really kind. I mean, I deal with more good ones than bad ones. No kidding. No kidding. I, I'm blown away right now. I, <laughs> I really am. I mean, I, I love some good woo here. Okay. I, I am a very oh, goodness. How man. deep do you want to go? No, we're, <laughs> you I mean, have no idea. <laughs> uh, Robin, I'm going to tell you right now, me and my audience, we're going to have to go right down the rabbit hole to what we okay. call the we call a brand new level of, of woo on this show called Chad Smith Maximum Woo. We need okay. this. We need this. I, I if, if So you want to know about them levitating and how they cloak and, and, and if, how if, they open a portal woo, into the ground and just kind of like dive yes, in it. Yeah. Yes. If, if, if woo was in a syringe right now, I would be injecting it into my body. Well, here's the thing, Dave. The only way, and I don't mean this disrespectful to anybody. So I don't want anybody to take it that way. But if you want to know about them, if you seriously want to know what they are, who they are, their culture, their way of life, 
you got to get on the woo train because it's all part of it. They can be flesh and blood one minute. They can be multidimensional the second. I've had them stand within a couple of feet of me in flesh and blood and then go into cloak. I've been in my bed laying there watching TV at night. I've watched them walk through my wall, walk across the end of my bed, look over at me, and then just continue walking and go out the other wall. I mean, the things I've seen them do, it defies logic. But the thing is, is in my mind, I just have never doubted it because they've, they've always been upfront about it. I asked them, I also worked on the study with Dr. Melba Ketchum. And before I met her, I, I used to go, they'd come up to the house, they'd pound on the house every night at two o'clock outside my bedroom window, 2 a.m. I was the idiot that went outside in her pajamas and slippers, no flashlight, no weapon. And I'd go out there and I'd sit with them. And they would talk, they would either verbally talk or they would mind speak or they would pace around me. And they had an area where they would go and it was almost like a worship area that they went to every night. But I finally, one night I said to them, I just want to know what you are. I'm tired of hearing what everybody else says you are because I just don't care. I want to know. I mean, if you want to know something, go to the horse's mouth. It, it's really that simple. They pointed to me and they said, we're human like you. And then they pointed up to the sky and they said, in star people. And I was like, okay, there you have it. And then they had done a stick structure. I was obsessed with stick structures. And they had done a stick structure in the back of my woods at an angle. And at the angle the structure was, it faced up to the sky to the only opening through the trees that you could see up to the sky. So a friend of mine had this brilliant, and it was a brilliant idea. So let's go into the township and let's get a plat map. Let's see how this maps up because he was an architect. And he looked at that and he said, I'm telling you, that is a map. So we got a plat map, superimposed it over the structure, and it matched immediately, 100% matched. That is insane. Which that made sense because insane. of the UFOs that were landing in my yard all the time. You know, I mean, I would have them land in the yard, and then I would have missing time. One night I was actually sitting in bed. I was watching TV, and I felt like I was being pulled. I got sucked through a wall. Next thing I know, I'm like, you know, 75 to 100 feet above ground and I look over my shoulder I was wide awake when this happened now I'm afraid of heights so this is the last place I want to be and I look up and there's a craft and there's this beam floating next to the craft I look down and the three of my core guys were right there three out of the four and I'm going you guys you can you simply can't let them take me and it was it was really cool because they started to levitate and then the arm came out and grabbed me and pulled me back I got pulled back with such force. It, I went right through the wall again. I landed on the bed, whacked my head on the wall. I had a goose egg for over two weeks and had a concussion. That is amazing. That is amazing. I, I'm an ET contact E2. So you, oh, great. And, and I've seen, uh, and I've had a couple of run-ins with Sasquatch. I've seen two of the beings I've been chased out of the forest by a couple of them, which was mm -hmm. uh, kind of cool. You know, because yeah. I didn't, I didn't realize it was them until, until eight months later when I heard the, uh, the, uh, Sierra sounds. Cause we heard the, oh, they're fabulous. Just fabulous. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's been a fun ride. It really has been a fun ride, but I can tell you this, I want more. Well, I, I tell you, here's some, and I, I've not put this out anywhere other than Duke knows about it because I actually tell Duke everything. He's probably one of the best human beings I've ever met. Um, his show is above reproach. I just, I love it. But I work with contactees. I also work with people, um, whether it's through the ETs for the dogmen, the Bigfoot or whatever dealing they're dealing with that they're having issues with. I've gone in and, and corrected vortexes and, you know, open and closed portals, that kind of thing. And, there is a gentleman that is an ET abductee has been since he was little and about seven years old, seven years ago, I was introduced to him and I was able to get the ETs to leave him alone. It wasn't the good ones that were harassing him. It was the bad ones. He's been fine all these years. He contacted me roughly eight months ago and he said, you aren't going to believe this, that I got abducted again. And I said, what? I was in shock because it'd been seven years with nothing. And he said, but these weren't the bad ones. This was a different group. He said, I felt nothing but love from him. He described what he had seen and what he, where he had been and that kind of thing. And he said, well, I got one more thing to tell you. And I said, what? I've dealt with ET since I was little. I've had good ones. I've had bad ones. I've had everything in between. And 
I said, what is it? And he said, Robin, you're the only one I've ever talked to about this. There isn't anybody else. And I said, okay. And he said, they have a message for you. And I said, what do you mean a message for me? I mean, if they want to tell me something generally, I get it directly. And he said, no, he said, I'm, they want me to tell you how they abduct people and they want you to go public with it. And they went through the entire thing of the process, starting from when people are born and who they choose to do it. And they watch them. A lot of the information that he had was information I'd pretty much figured out by myself. The thing with the ETs is they can imitate your looks. They can imitate your body movements. They cannot imitate the voice. So for anybody out there where they come after them in dream state or whether they come after them when they're in awake and, you know, in real time, they cannot imitate the voice. They can't. It's just impossible for them to do it. I've never yet been able to find one that could get it correct, but they can do the body movements. They can do the looks. Watch for the eyes and watch for the vocals because they cannot do it. And in these things that this gentleman was sharing with me in this message for me, that was part of it. And it, it was really in depth. And, it, and they're like, people are going to laugh at you. Nobody's going to believe you. But you have to let people know because this is the only way they can, you know, they're going to know what's going on. So it was pretty in depth. I, I was really shocked. For you going through all of these experiences and I mean, you have probably had your case of people, you know, screaming at you, where's your proof? Oh, you yeah. know, I mean, you're a nut bar, you're yep. everything along those lines, Robin. And, and yep. I, and I'll be honest with you, I, from experiencer to experiencer, I can tell you that right now that I believe your story, oh, you know, thanks. because you have to, I think a story like yours you have to be an experiencer to fully comprehend yeah. what you are saying. All right. Well, here's Go ahead. here's kind of how I look at it. Number one, and I tell this to everybody a few things, and Duke knows this as well. Number one, I don't believe there's experts in this field. No matter how much you know, it's probably a drop on a pin composed of what's actually out there. I don't believe anybody's an expert. I think that we need to work on the same rule that the, the Bigfoots use, which is the law of raw or the law of one, where everything is done as a collective. If we work as a collective, then we learn the information. So I take it right off the table that there's even an expert out there. I know I certainly don't consider myself one. The other thing when it comes to this stuff is I experience a lot of things, yes. But I also have people that have been to my home and are like blown away because this stuff is going on when they're here. I don't normally invite a lot of people to my home because it's a big responsibility when you have this much going on to have people come. Well, I'm have, telling you right now, I'm coming over. Oh, you're welcome. You can come anytime. Yeah. We yeah, got room I, for you. Yeah, and good. So I, I, I you know, I do have people that come over and they leave with a whole new understanding on a lot of things. And my poor son in law was here and stayed temporarily. And like the first night he saw a Bigfoot that stepped out from between the trees. And the next night he was outside watching him run around the backyard. You know, within a week later, he's like, You got six UFOs above the house. I'm like, Yeah, I know. Mom, there's one across the driveway poking its head up and down between the bushes. And he's out there with the IR glasses. And I'm like, I know. Like, you have to pace yourself or you're going to have a total paranormal meltdown. Just pace yourself because it's going to go on all the time. But I, I've always had people that um, could verify what I was saying because either they saw me do some of the work that I do and saw that it changed things or they saw some of the cryptids or they saw the, the UFOs or they've seen the ETs or whatever, there's been enough people that have been there and seen it to support it. And then on top of it, I have photos, which I shared with you some of them. And I always tell everybody, you know, they may not be the best in the world, but they're not, they're actually, they're not blob squatches either. You know, I have a picture of a lizard man. I have a picture of a UFO above my house with a portal opening in front of my garage and there's a head sticking out of it. And the head is very clear to see. You can tell what it is. I mean, you know, I do have these things. So when I talk to people and they, you know, they they go on and they say, well, you're crazy. They're entitled to their opinion. I don't take offense to it. I know it's a lot to handle. I live it daily and it's a lot to handle. I don't expect everybody to jump on the train and, and just say, okay, I'm going to believe everything she says. And I'm okay with that. I generally tell people, my job on this planet is not to prove anything for anybody. That's not why I'm here. I'm not going to try to convince you. I'm going to share with you the information that I've learned. I'm going to share with you the experiences that I have. 
and what I believe is the truth and it's my truth. What you do with that information is entirely up to you. I take no offense to it. You know, I, I don't like the haters that have to be cruel about it. If you don't believe me, I'm okay with that. Then you don't have to talk to me. It's you can scroll on by, you can change the channel. I'm okay with that. I'm not going to be offended. It's a lot to take on, but you don't have to be cruel. You know, for the people that do want to know, I'm happy to share what I know. I know the feeling. I know the feeling. What do you say to your critics who, who are like, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. That's BS. You can't say that. That's not real. I've never heard of that. So it obviously can't <laughs> be, you know, because I'll be honest with you. I, I did an interview. I've done a couple of interviews recently where people have been trying to tear apart my stories. Mm -hmm. They're like, I don't believe this guy or whatever. And I'm like, really? Like, why would I come Number on? one, why would anybody make this up? Who wants to be labeled as crazy? What I've yeah. gotten to the point of, like, you know, people that'll come up to me and say, well, I don't believe you. And I'm like, you're entitled to your opinion. But while you are entitled to your opinion, you can believe that none of it's true. But you're going to go home and you're going to sit and you're going to watch TV and you're going to look for the Bigfoot shows and the cryptid shows and the ET shows. Meanwhile, I'm going to go home and I'm going to play with all these things. So you go ahead and don't believe me because I'm OK with that. But while you're at home wishing and praying you could experience it and learn it and looking for a show to give you information. I'm going to be outside. I'm going to be playing with the Bigfoot. I'm going to have the dog been running around. I'm going to have the UFOs over my house and I'm going to go on about my business. And if you don't want to believe me, I'm okay with that. When your mind is ready to accept it, give me a call. Right. And, and I totally agree with you because I'm telling you right now, uh, if I get on a plane to go, uh, once this COVID crap is over and I could get on a plane, I'm coming to your place. I want no, you're welcome. No matter if I'm in here in Michigan, you are always welcome. Number one, and a lot of people don't realize this. And I'm just putting it out there because you brought up COVID. Um, the cryptids are susceptible to COVID. And there's been the big, you know, big question of can they get it? They absolutely can get it. Um, the only thing that I found that cannot get COVID are the ETs. And according to the ETs, as long as the cryptids are in a portal, they also will not get it in the portal. So in the meantime, when we when we look at these cryptids, we need to be clear on where they actually how they got here. Number one, I believe the Ebens are the ones that created the dogmen. Now, that doesn't mean the military doesn't have their version that they created as well, because we already know that they've dipped their toes in absolutely everything and messed it up. But the actual dogmen men themselves. OK, they are and by their own admission. They are a canine human ET hybrid straight across. That's not the genetically modified ones by the government. That's the actual dogmen. When it comes to the Bigfoot, by their own admission, they are a human hybrid. They are human in ET. It's a fact. So if humans can get COVID, you can very well bet believe that they're going to get it as well. Now, I do healing on them. They come to me for healing. I know they can get COVID. Now, when COVID hit, I went out and did the research of, okay, what can we get out in the woods that's going to help them? They make fire. It's a fact. I know it's a very controversial subject. Do they make fire? I've watched them do it. So, yeah, they do. Um, but they can make pine needle tea. That's a very big help. Also, if they can get their hands on squash and pumpkins and those kind of things. So there's a list of things that they can actually use, but they actually can get it. I'm going to get you to hold on right there, Robin, because we are going to go to break here at the bottom of the hour. You know why I believe her and her research? We're 30 minutes into this show, and she hasn't <laughs> used that damn idiotic word squatch once. Oh, never. This, I hate this, that word with a passion. I know Robin is serious about her yeah. research. I Spaced mean, there, I Radio call them the foot for short or for a circle. Squatch talk on Based Out Radio next. All right. We're good. This is fun. Oh, I love you. <laughs> I love you. Thank you, dude. Oh, you're awesome. Thank I know you, dude. When I talked to Klaus, he said to me, he said, so are you opposed to me booking you for 27 more shows? <laughs> no, that, no, no, that, that's, that's a good, that's a good call. That's a good call. <laughs> I enjoyed talking to him so much. He was wonderful. Yeah. You know, he's not bad for a guy with a third nipple, you know, he's <laughs> hey, as, the more the merrier. Hey, whatever. We like him around here. All right. I'm tremendous. Gonna, I'm just going to verbally, because uh, I've been saying hello to everybody, and I'm way behind for some reason. Uh, the chat on Twitch is not working. So Gnome Squatch, 
Project Blue Book, good to see you guys. Uh, we we uh, we censor topics in the chat room because this is not a democracy. This is a Davocracy or Davianism, whatever you want to mm -hmm. call it. And everybody here, Anthony, uh, I know you're new, so I'm just explaining. Everybody here from the time they woke up in the morning until the time they arrived at this show has been hammered by politics, hammered by world problems, and hammered by COVID. So we blocked that type of chat in this chat room because Yay. people need a break. So this is why we are... Uh, we do not allow COVID talk uh, in the chat room. It may come up, politics may come up during the show, but we avoid it as much as possible and do not allow it in the chat room. So we're not trying to offend you. We're not trying to, to uh, be jerks in the chat room. We just want to make sure that we have everything in order so that way everybody can have a good time and there's no political or COVID vax versus anti-vax uh, debates in the chat room so that's my rules if you if uh just uh blame it on me blame it on me <laughs> all right uh gorgeous carol has returned gorgeous carol look at her look how beautiful she is all right moving on here uh g west good to see you michael smith thank you for coming on in and uh dirty filth of course and Andrew, how you trucking, buddy? The stunning Pam McSee. Good to see you. Glenn John McEnroe, the pride of Wimbledon, right there. And let's see here. Um, I'm almost done. I'm almost caught up. I can feel it. I can feel it. And uh, David Pilcher, how are you? Welcome. Uh, Anthony, no need to apologize, man. I hope you don't think that I was being a jerk. Um, just, uh, we just, uh, want to make sure that you all have a good time tonight, man. I'll have a good time. The stunning Stephanie Jackson has returned. Yes. It's been a few weeks for Ozzy Rob. How's tomorrow looking? How's them ham hocks? Give us an update if you don't mind. Uh, let's see who else is here. Mm, we're caught up. Opa, the Greco. Opa. There we go. Uh, let's see here. We're all caught up now. Uh, I have two gifting areas right now, just so you know, uh, Robin. And the problem, oh, that, the problem that I have right now is both my gifting areas are surrounded by forest fires. Oh, I no. I cannot get to them. And in 2017, my one gifting site, shut right down afterwards because of forest fires. Yeah, and they probably moved out. They, I thought this year we would start getting some action. No. And uh, so I'm just leaving the stuff out there. And uh, yeah. that, that's it. The uh, thing too, though, Dave, is that um, depending on which clan you're working with is whether or not they'll take them. But you have to understand that in their culture – you know, they have laws. They have laws just like we do, even though they're they're different than ours. Mm -hmm. And in some clans, they're much more relaxed where the law of not taking anything from our people, they, they go ahead and they do it all the time. But then certain clans, they are very strict about that. However, they and they'll tell you for those that mind speak with them, it's not taking of the gift that matters to them. It's the gift in general. So like, let's say you put out a bag of apples, they don't take it. It means just as much to them that you did that they know that you did. Right. So it's the act itself that pulls weight with them. Yes. DA Roberts, how you doing? Eric with a K is here. You know what, people? We are Eric with a K's fourth favorite show. We're number four on Eric with a K's list. We were number five. We moved up to number four. Very proud of that. Aiden, how you doing? Um, we'll get into gifting here in just a second. The super chat is open and a uh, big thank you to all of you who, have, uh, who choose to support this show that way. And, uh, thank you to all the veterans listening in. We're going to get going here with the second half hour right now. Hey! 
Second half hour of Spaced Out Radio is now underway. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for joining us. Really do appreciate looking at... Oh, sometimes you have listeners in Australia that just make you laugh. Thank you, Oz. <laughs> we appreciate that. want to remind you that if you miss portions of this show or others, check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Do old Davey the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram, Spaced Out Radio Show. We continue on tonight with Major Woo tonight. Major, major <laughs> woo. I love this guest already. She oh. is amazing with her encounters of Sasquatch, extraterrestrials, dogman. Robin McRae is here. And Robin, you know, one of the things that I love about these cryptids is how elusive they are. I yeah. love I love the fact that I can go out in the forest a hundred times and see absolutely nothing. And then all of a sudden there's going to be that one time you go into the forest and you're going to be like, did I just see what I think I saw? You know, it's yeah. amazing. That's what well, I love about this. The things that they do are so subtle. That's the thing. It's not that there's not things out there. They're so subtle that they're actually made for us not to even realize that they're there. I used to years ago. I don't do it as much. I probably should get back to doing it. But years ago, I would go every night before it got dark and I would walk around the perimeter of my house. I'd watch the ground. I'd see where the sticks were at on the ground. I'd, I'd check the roof. You know, I mean, I'd look from the ground and look up towards the roof to see if I saw anything. I'd walk around the yard. I'd go to bed, I'd get up the next day and everything was completely moved. Now, had I not done that the night before and I walked around, I would have never noticed it because it's that subtle. You know, I mean, I would wake up the next morning and there'd be like 12 rocks on my roof. And I had taken these, their wire baskets that you bolted underneath your window and you put flowers in it and they had this, like, I don't know, it's like these little, baskets that were made out of like a mulch or whatever that you would put the flowers in and I was so excited I got them and I put them all around the house at the windows I went to bed I got up the next day all the flowers were gone and they stole all of the mulch bedding out of it I mean and all I had left is wire brackets so I asked I said what did you need those for well we used it to build fire I said and you needed to take every single one I had I mean good lord They are such characters, you know, like we have uh, a, we have a, uh, a gifting site that we set up last year in, in one area. And my good buddy, Mark, his daughter put down a 1960s Canadian nickel. And <laughs> we went back the week later, the nickel was gone. <laughs> we go back the week later and sitting on top of one of the toys we left at the tree is a 2019 Canadian nickel. Oh my gosh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, the really? Exchange program. You know, and I loved it. You know, it was funny though, because we ended up a few weeks later putting a trail cam up in that area. Nothing. It's been dead ever since. They didn't like the trail cam. Now, I put a trail cam up one day, and I, I went back out there to look at it because everybody was on me. You know, get a trail cam, get a trail cam. I went out there the next day, and they buried it, totally buried it with brush and logs. and everything. I mean, there was, like, no way to get to it again. But they're pranksters. They have a very bizarre sense of humor, like, really bizarre. Now, we had um, a friend of mine who is – she is phenomenal. She lives in Pennsylvania, very, very knowledgeable, taught me so much. Like I'll forever be grateful to this woman. And I love her. She's like a sister to me. And we had um, three or four clans that had, had come in and they wanted an Indian smudge ceremony. And she was visiting at my house and I had another friend that was there. So she did the smudge ceremony for them and they were all happy. I had a Shetland pony and this pony, you couldn't put him in a pen. He climbed out of it, ran through hot wire. He was a hot mess. So he was on a 200 foot boat rope 
And they would go and untie him and they would move him all around the property. It was like, where's Waldo? Every morning I'd get up, it was, where's the pony now? And they would untie him and retie his rope up somewhere else around the property. We had 10 acres. So you, you could never tell where he was going to be the next day. And so we did the smudge ceremony and I heard him whinnying and I looked over and he was absolutely petrified. He had been untied. His rope was going into the woods and they were dragging him into the woods. And he's bucking and he's rearing up and he's absolutely in a panic because he's terrified he's getting drug in the woods. Well, the clan that was normally there, he was very used to. They played with him all the time. They moved him around the property. You know, I, I mean, the pictures I have of all the bizarre things they did with him. And I would find little tiny muddy butt prints on him from the kids. The kids would actually get on him and they'd braid his mane and everything. He didn't know these other clans. And they're pulling him into the woods and he's absolutely terrified. So like an idiot, all I thought about was this pony. I run over and I grab the rope and I'm pulling back so they can't pull him in the woods. Now, why in the world I thought I could stop them from pulling this pony? Like I was the village idiot because there's no way I'm going to be have more strength than they do. So I look like I'm skiing across the grass at one o'clock in the morning because I've got my feet braced and they're dragging me and the pony into the woods. And I, I'm yelling at him. I'm going, you will not take him in the woods. You can't have him. You're scaring him. My friend's having a breakdown. She says to my other friend, she says, oh, my gosh, do something, do something. He looks at her. He says, oh, it's no big deal. This kind of stuff goes on all the time here. You know, don't worry about it. She's got it. I'm hydroplaning across the grass and the, the wet on the ground. And I'm getting drugged to the woods. I get to the woods and I didn't look up, thankfully. I only look down and I see the foot of the big foot and my toes are literally less than, than 10 to 12 inches apart. And I, I'm 5'9", five 5'9 nine, five nine and a half, and I'm looking at his thigh. And I'm thinking, I'm not looking up at the face because in some clans, you don't look them in the eye. I mean, it's disrespectful. Others, they could care less. So I, and I'm just, I wouldn't let go of this rope. And I know he had to be sitting there cracking up in his mind thinking this stupid, silly human, but he let go of the rope. I think it was just because of the audacity that I thought I could do anything about it. I don't think it had anything to do with him thinking, you know, I could stop him by any means. He drugged me all the way across the yard, but he let it go. But I ended up toe to toe with him <laughs> before he finally did it. And I think he just thought I was so hysterically stupid that he just wasn't going to waste his time. Well, you know, I mean, how could he not laugh? No offense to you. I, I mean, I couldn't. Afterwards, I laughed my butt off. I thought that was the dumbest thing ever. If he would have been aggressive, he could have ripped me limb to limb, you know, and I but I was worried about the pony. And they used to play just unbelievable tricks on Igor. Igor would come to the house and it was everything they could do just to pick, pick at him. I mean, they love him to pieces, but just to, to pick on him and play jokes on him. He went out one morning and he had decided we had this one spot where we would put the gifts out and I put way too much food out. I mean, it was ridiculous. Gifting, you have to be careful. You're never going to feed him enough. If you do it at your home, you're never going to feed him enough to fill him. It's just they're getting a snack. And I had this huge gifting area, and Igor took a jar and put chicken legs in it, tightened the jar lid, took it back out there, and decided he was going to sit in our pickup truck, watch the woods where the gifting site was at all night long so that when they came in to get the chicken legs, he would get them on film. I, on the other hand, said, you have good luck with that. I'm going to bed because I already knew how this was going to play out. So I went to bed. He stayed out there in like 530 in the morning. None of them came in. None of them took the food. And he came and went to came in the house, got a cup of coffee, walked back out to the truck. And here's the empty jar sitting on the truck. As soon as he left, they unscrewed the top, took the chicken, put the jar on the truck for him. <laughs> I mean, he come in the house just roaring. He was laughing so hard, but they would play pranks on him. We had Igor was there with two other researchers. And they had been up, we'd been out in the woods all day long. And I went in and went to bed. They wanted to stay out in case any of them came up to the house because they always came up at 2 a.m. I knew I was going to have to get woke up. So Igor 
Bob and Joe were all outside. Bob and Joe stayed up against the house. And there is a correlation. They do use the other animals in the woods to do their bidding for them. If they want them to do something, they use them. They oh, she froze. She froze. We'll get we'll get Robin back here momentarily when she's unfrozen here. But the big thing is, I mean, some of these stories are incredible. Absolutely incredible. Let's see if we can add her back here. No, she's still frozen. We will get her back here momentarily. Robin McRae is our guest. I mean, look, this is someone's experience. There's going to be people listening to this who sit there and say, well, who knows? This sounds way too foobar about what is going on. This is impossible. This is completely not understanding to social values of what we are to believe and not to believe. Where's the proof? Where is the proof? That's what people are going to be yelling. But, you know, this is her experience. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to try some of this. Those of us who are, have any amateur interest in Sasquatch, we need to pay attention to this tonight. Let's give it a try. Now, in my area for a gifting site, you can't put food out. There's too many wild animals. Too many wild animals. All yeah. right. Robin. Hi. We got you. I was just explaining to my audience, like with gifting sites here, you know, we can't put out food here because we got too many wild animals, you know, that will tear and shred things apart from bears to yeah. mountains and everything like that. And, you know, grizzly bears and badgers and, who knows what else is up there? Now the raccoons are moving in. We've never had raccoons up here. Now they're moving in. Well, they use the other animals. I mean, they, they literally do. These raccoons that they had at my place, they would every day, it was the same thing. I would put the food out. They would come in at a certain time at night. They, the raccoons came first. They went through every bucket, everything that we had. They never touched the food. Then the biggest one would go to the tallest tree look the directions that the Bigfoots came in at, scream like crazy, come back down, and they would leave the opposite way. They never took one bite of food. And it was within a matter of minutes that the Bigfoots were in there. I have three that come through here about every three months, and they have a cougar they bring every time. Interesting. They, uh they literally will use whatever's out there. They have, you know, they'll use the coyotes and the wolves and the bobcats or whatever they want as a pet. I mean, they can use mind control to begin with. And they just tame the rest of them. You tend to believe that Sasquatch are a people. Yes. Okay. Now, many First Nations will say that they are a primitive wild man. Mm -hmm. so, some will say that they're a primitive wild man who has discovered some very supernatural type abilities. How did you come to the conclusion that these creatures, whatever they may be, are actually related to humans? Well, before they even told me to begin with, the old saying of if it looks like a duck and it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's a duck. Okay, they have language. They can speak any language they want. They have their own language, but they can also speak ours. And they can speak it fluently if they have to. It may be hard for us to understand it at times, but they still have it. They have their own alphabet. They can read. They can write. I've watched them do this. I have witnesses that I've worked with that have watched them do this. They, the intelligence level that they have is unbelievable. They blow us away. They have laws. They have a culture. They have everything that we have. The only thing that is about it is it's different. It's not our ways. They have their own ways. It's like if you go to a foreign country, you go in there and you don't know what's going on over there because everything they do is different than what we do. It's the same thing with them. But they do have language. I mean, not only just the telepath speaking telepathically, which they do fluently, they can speak. They can speak English. They can speak whatever language they need to. But they also have their own language. Now, they aren't speaking in an animal tongue. They're speaking in plain English. 
They have an alphabet. They can write. My husband took their alphabet and wrote a sign up and said, welcome friends on it. He got a response from them. He left a pen out with it. I have a friend that is in, I think she's in Maryland. And she has one that left her a note. People all over the globe are finding that they can write. They can read. They can write. They can speak. They have laws. They have family units. All of these things that make us a human, they can do. So that's why I say if it looks like a duck, it quacks and it walks like a duck, it's a duck. Yes, they kind of are people with a kick because they do have the paranormal abilities. And the paranormal abilities are extensive. And I mean totally extensive, more than most people can even comprehend. And I don't claim to know all of them. I don't know that anybody will ever know all of them. But that doesn't mean they don't have them. I've been in, a two, my house is a two story. I've been upstairs and had them levitate and look in a window. The ETs have done it. You know, I mean, they can pretty much do whatever they need to do. There has been reports all over the globe, and I've seen it as well. They literally open a portal up in the ground and jump down in it. I've watched them open a portal in my front yard. You know, I mean, the things they do defies logic. And I totally understand where people say, well, she's got to be nuts because that's not possible. We have been dumbed down. We have been taught by our government that these things do not exist. We need to take the saying that says seeing is believing and reverse it. Once you believe that there are things out there in this world that are possible, you will be amazed what you actually see. The world that we've been programmed to believe does not exist. The world that we live in is out there. We have to open our minds to be able to experience it and see it. People all over the place will be out walking in the woods and all of a sudden see a portal. My husband was in Indiana and this is what prompted him to try to speak to somebody, it ended up me. That's how I met him, and we ended up married. But he was simply walking in the woods, and he saw this big, big thing that was the size of a trash bag floating in midair. It, I mean, it was just a free-floating portal. There are portals that are anchored that can't be moved. There are portals that um, are not anchored that can be moved all over the place. The Bigfoots and the Dogmen and any of the cryptids Open a portal anywhere they want. They have no problem doing it. They open up rifts. I know they can do it. They've taught me how to do it. Anybody can do it. If I can do it, a trained ape can do it. How do you but do they, it? Open, well, can you open a portal right now? Well, I mean, on air, no. I mean, I, I when they need me to is when it happens. I think it has. They need to have. Here's the thing. They need for certain things one of us and one of them. And that's usually when they I get called in to do things. Have I opened portals? Yeah, I have opened portals at people's places. I do energy work. Um, I was taught by the Bigfoots from the time I was very, very young to do energy work, and it's only expanded as I've gotten older. There's also something called Earthkeeper. Earthkeeper is all over the globe. My friend in Pennsylvania is the one that um, first introduced me to Earthkeeper, and I'm very grateful that she did. He's taught me how to do energy work. Everything is done as, with energy. The Bigfoots, the cryptids, everything they do is energy-based. Everything that they can do is energy-based. It's all done by their vibration and by energy. Every is, bit of it. Is that how we don't have any good videos ever since Patterson-Giblin? Absolutely. What it, there is a way to get them. You just have to know what to do. Number one, if you take your camera, whether it's a video camera, your cell phone, whatever, and you focus that lens on them, they will be blurry every single solitary time. If you want to get a picture of any clarity, you want them off center. You don't want it focused on them. To begin with, their culture believes that taking a picture of them or a video steals their soul. They go by Native American traditions in that way where they believe it steals their soul. That's why they're so opposed to it. I mean, I've had one dog man pup that told me I could take his picture and that picture came out clear as a bell. Can you know, I, it just, it depends on the individual what they're going to do. But for the most part, they believe it steals their soul. So they radiate a certain energy. They radiate a certain vibration, which is much higher than ours. Their energy level is much stronger than ours. That's what causes the blur. So when you take a picture or a video of them and they're off center, 
and that energy is not being radiated 100% right into that camera lens, you have a much better chance of getting that photo or getting that video. Okay. So I'm going to ask you this as we got about three and a half minutes before we got to go to break at the top of the hour. Robin McRae is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio. Why is Dogman such an angry individual comparatively to Sasquatch? What pissed him off so much? Well, and, and nobody's going to like my response to this. He's not. Okay. Um, I have had very good experiences with Dogman. I've talked to some that are extremely nasty. Number one, they're more stoic. They're not as lighthearted as, per se, the Bigfoots are. The Bigfoots are kind of, you know, they're pranksters. Um, they have a wicked sense of humor. Dog oh, we froze up again. I will ask her to see if we could get the picture of, of that dog man. I, I would like to see that. Oh, I there think you I go. You okay, yeah. Yeah, I'll yeah. get it to you. Um, I, I, it's a dogman pup. He was about 30 foot up in a tree. But the dogmen are much more stoic. They're not as carefree. They're not as relaxed. They basically are the police of the woods. Okay? So they go, when you deal with them, they have a no-nonsense approach to everything. It's not that they're more aggressive. I've been around them for years, and I've not had any problems. My one son went out hunting, and we had 10 acres. And whenever he would go, they, my kids would hunt. I would let the foots and the dogmans know, go to the front woods. They're only going to hunt in the back. That worked well. He had went out in the back one morning, very, very early, sat down at the base of a pine tree and fallen asleep. He woke up to a whimpering sound. And here is this three foot tall dogman pup, like standing literally a few feet from him. And it looked at him and turned its head and cocked its little ears at him. And he was just couldn't. I mean, he was shocked because he got woke up by it. And then he heard mom howling and the baby turned around and ran to mom. And so he got out of there before there was a problem. But I've not had these experiences that other people have. I have talked to the highly aggressive ones. And a lot of that comes with, again, people that don't know the culture, that don't know the ways, that don't know the signs. Most of these cryptids give you a warning. Not all of them, but a lot of them do. But when it comes to dogmen, you have to understand that they always say there's all these variants. And there very well may be. Like I said, I'm not an expert. I don't believe that there are variants as far as what types. There are variant in their individuality as far as what they look like. None of the cryptids are identical. You never will find two alike. But the government has created some too. The ones the government created are far more dangerous than the regular ones will ever even think to be. Now, land, uh, the other thing with them, the ones that are highly aggressive tend to go off in their own little groups to be left alone. But what do we do? We chase them around in the woods. When you leave your home, you are now in their world, okay? If you're sitting in your living room, and this goes with the Bigfoots, it goes with the dogmen, I, I have cat people around me, it goes with all of them. If you're sitting in your living room, and something that you don't know quite what it is, but has always chased everybody around, and we have not been kind to these things, and you're sitting there, and you have your children there, or your grandchildren there, and somebody kicks in your door and comes marching in there, you're going to want to blow their head off, and you're going to protect your family. And my, I'm sorry, but my opinion is, how can we ask them to do anything else? I hear you there. I'm going to get you to hold on right there, because we are going to go to break here at the top of the hour. Robin McRae is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio. We're going to learn more about Bigfoot, Dogman, communication, aliens, and so much more <laughs> as we continue on here on Spaced Out Radio tonight. We're having a fun time. I hope you are too. We will talk to you very soon. We'll take your questions, audience, when we come back here on The Mighty SOR. I'm just going to put you on mute. I'm going to run my dogs outside and I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. I'm going to run to the restroom. So <laughs> not a problem. Not a problem. We'll be uh, right back here. People G West. Thank you so much for that super chat. Really do appreciate that. And uh, we'll be right back everyone.
All right, I am back. Give me two seconds here. All right, I'll bring you back in. Hello, hello. All right, we. I know we got some questions uh, building up here from our audience. Going to quickly say hello. I to did them. send you over that dogman picture too. That dogman baby. Okay, cool. I don't know how to post it for the show, so I'll, I'll let you handle all that. I sent you yeah. a bunch of pictures. Yeah, I will uh, get to that here momentarily. Mm -hmm. Brantavius, good to see you back. And uh, let me find something here. Just want to see who else has come on in. Dwayne Ayers, how are you, man? Thanks for coming on in. Kevin, how you doing? And I want to say a big thank you to Adam, to G West, to Anseline, Vinster, Kira, Andrew, and YJ for the amazing super chats tonight. Really do appreciate earning your listening ears. I will show the photo. I just got to download everything here first, everyone. So just bear with me. We'll get to it. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I don't know how to put them up on here. So that's all on Dave. <laughs> Leave it to me. I will get to it. We got about uh, 30 seconds here. And uh, let's see here. Ooh. That should do it. Uh, give me. Here we go, everyone. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio with Dave Scott. Follow Dave on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Facebook Spaced Out Radio Show. Hour number two of Spaced Out Radio is now underway. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Really do appreciate earning your listening ears wherever you are on this beautiful planet we call Earth. Want to say hello to everyone listening in on our terrestrial affiliates around North America and digitally on TalkStream Live, Revolution Radio, and KPNL. All of our archives are free by going to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Do old Davey the favor, hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Fakula. Fakula is your password. Use it wisely, space travelers, as the clam sets the password each and every night right here on Spaced Out Radio. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio, and on Instagram, Spaced Out Radio Show. We continue on tonight with... Robin McRae. She is a lifelong experiencer. She has been in contact with everything from aliens to Sasquatch <laughs> to Bigfoot. And earlier in the program, uh, for our YouTube listeners, she mentioned that she had a photo of a baby dog man. Now, I'm looking at this picture right now, and I'm going to expand it here. So, Robin, I'm going to get you to kind of describe for our radio audience what they are not seeing in this photo. Well, again, like I said, I, this photo was taken because I was actually, we had just moved into this house. And um, I had been laying down and it wanted me to come outside. It was mine speaking. And I just, you know, I, I was tired. I had been outside all day long and I'm in South Carolina. So you live on the sun. It was hot. I didn't want to go out. And I just told him I wasn't coming out. And he said, but I just want you to come out. And I said, I'm not coming. And he said, I'll let you take my picture. And I said, you know what, if I go out there and I take a picture and you're not there, then you're lying to me, which means I'm done talking to you. I'm not wasting my time. Oh, no, you'll, I'll be there. I'll be there. He said, I'm up in the trees. And I said, okay. So I went up there, took a picture where he said, you know, he said, I'm off to this side and I'm up in the tree. And I, and there he was. I mean, you can see the snout. You can see the tip of his ears. I had somebody say, oh, it's a bear. It's not a bear. I was in there. I mean, I, I know what a bear looks like. I've never seen a black bear here. Not that they probably aren't, but I've never seen one. But he just, there he was. He said his name was Nico, but 
He's come back a couple times. I mean, he mind speaks quite frequently. Um, I've seen him like darting through the woods. I haven't got any other good pictures of him, but that was him. He wasn't very old. I took that picture probably three years ago when I first moved here. Now on that picture, you could see the snout. Yes, you can, you can see the tips of his ears. You can see the tips of his ears. I mean, a lot of people would say maybe that looks like a black bear. Yeah, and I've had that, and I, I do appreciate that. However, um, I was born and raised in Michigan. We had black bears all over the place. I, I know what a black bear is. There was no black bear out there. This was approximately 30. We have giant pine trees here. I mean, massive, tall pine trees. And he was like 30 feet up in the air. And like you said, I've seen him since then running through the woods, but I have never gotten an, another picture of him. He promised I'd get the picture if I would come out. It has to do with the radi the energy that I radiate, which cracks me up because I never feel like I have that much energy, but they think I do. And I do energy work for the Bigfoots and the, and the dogmen and such. And he wanted me to come out so he could feel my energy. And that was his main goal. And I said, I wasn't going to come that we would do it at another day. And he insisted. And that's when he said, well, if you come out, you can get my picture. And I thought, yeah, right. I bet. So I told him, I said, if you lie to me, then I, you're dead to me. I'm not talking to you anymore. And I was stunned. I really was because I certainly did not think I would get a picture. Now, obviously this photo has been zoomed in and it, yes. it, it looks a little pixelated. What does the original photo show? just a very, very, very tall pine tree. And I took it from my deck. It was probably, I want to say 75 feet away from my deck when I took it. And there was just this huge, immense pine tree. I couldn't even get the whole pine tree in one shot. And I saw him on there. So I went ahead and I cropped it just so it was easier to see. But the pine tree itself is about 30, 30 feet tall. My goodness. I didn't know dogs could climb trees. Dogmen can get up a tree like nobody's business. I mean, these things, again, they're part human. Um, it's just like the Bigfoot. They can they can climb like you wouldn't believe. We had this huge, huge oak tree in the back of our property when I was in Michigan. And you could see raw marks on these massive branches where their hands would go. And they would just scale it. They would go up there. That was like a big hot spot for them. And it was right next to an old hot wire fence that, of course, was not hot anymore. And the property next to us, my in-laws had, and it was vacant. So I had access to that 10 acres as well. And they literally took the hot wire and lifted it up and hooked it. And, of course, it was cold. It was dead. Lifted it over a branch and made it easy so they could just walk in and out of it. I would like to take a second, Dave, if I can. And we were talking a minute ago, you know, about why the dogmen were grumpy. Sure. I just want to put it out there for everybody. By no means do I want anybody to think that I say or even believe that all of these things are good because they are not. Just like with our people, we have rapists, murderers, pedophiles, you know, all these crazy things because they all these things have got a human lineage in it as well as what they are. There's good and bad in absolutely everything. I don't care what it is. So not all of these things are good. And I've told everybody from the get-go, the good ones are the purest sense of love you will ever feel because it goes much deeper than what we experiences, experience it with our people. The bad ones are lethal. There really doesn't seem to be anything. I mean, you can get some that are just grumpy and will you know, want you out of there, but you have to be careful. And, but by no means do I want anybody to think that I'm saying all of these things are wonderful. Let's go out in the woods and hug them. Don't hug the Wookiee as Duke, as Duke says, um, because they are not all nice. I can see that. I can see that. You know, how do you tell the difference though, between a, a good Sasquatch and a bad Sasquatch or a good dog man and a bad dog man? It really isn't as hard as it sounds. Sometimes you just don't know till the last minute. I'm not going to lie. But um, myself, I read energy. And in the field that I'm in, it keeps me alive. Okay. Energy, negative energy feels different than positive energy. 
And so if you go into like, let's say you're walking out in the woods and everything seems wonderful. And then all of a sudden you just feel like something shifted and it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like it did the minute before. That means something with that negative energy has come into the woods. That's your cue to turn around and leave. But what happens with a lot of people that curiosity killed the cat syndrome kicks in. And so they've got to push it. That are these beings that are pushing that energy on you, giving you that warning so that you can just leave. But a lot of people don't do that. And that's where things get messed up. The other thing is misinformation when it comes to what they're doing to get you out of their area. Okay. People will say, well, they were waving their arms at me. Okay. If you think about it in the military, when they are waving their arms, they're surrendering. That's not an act of violence. I get people that contact me on a daily basis and tell me, oh, we, I had this really bad encounter with either a dogman or a Bigfoot or a goat man or whatever. And I'm like, okay, did it physically hurt you? Well, no. What did it do? And quite honestly, nine out of 10 times, it didn't do anything but give you the sign saying that it didn't want you there. You know, if you get a small pebble like the size of an acorn tossed at you, that is them simply finding out whether or not you're a threat and to let you know they're there, but they're doing it safely. They're not doing it with anything that can hurt you because they want to see if you're going to turn around when they let you know they're there and pull out a gun or do something to hurt them or their families. That is perfectly fine. I've had other times where people say, well, they weren't big rocks, you know, maybe the size of a golf ball. I, did they hit you with it? No, it never landed by. It didn't hit me. It landed near me. People, they do not miss. If they want to hit you, they are going to hit you. They do not miss. And then you have people that say they threw these giant boulders at me. Okay, you just got a warning to leave. Why are you still there? Like, listen to the, the what's going on around you. You know, if they, and somebody said, well, they yelled at me. Okay. If they yelled at you, leave. Common sense. Not everything is an attack. Not everything is safe by any means. But there are subtle things that they're going to do and normally will do. Now, you know, the worst of the worst of them may not give you those warnings, but nine out of ten of them will. I had somebody contact me the other day and they said everything was fine. And then all of a sudden it started screaming and hollering at me. So I simply asked it, you know, what was the problem? Well, its child was coming up. Now, I don't know about everybody else, but I assume they're like I am. I'm protective of my family. I'm protective of my children and my grandchildren. Now, I love these beings with every fiber that I have. I don't trust them with my kids. We found out years ago when my kids were little. My kids, all, by the way, all grew up with these things around them. So did my grandchildren. My one granddaughter, when she was um, four and a half, almost five years old, was sitting outside playing in the sand and I happened to look outside from the kitchen. I was making her something to eat. And three of my top core guys were out there rolling small rocks across the ground to her. She'd pick them up and she'd roll them back. And then they'd roll them back to her. You know, I went out and I brought her in the house. They never tried anything with her. But I don't take chances when it comes to my babies. Now, they can imitate everything. It doesn't matter if it's an animal noise or a person's voice. And at the time, I was married and my ex-husband my now ex-husband not my current husband was out in the woods hunting and he came in the house absolutely livid that I was out there while he was hunting talking and I said I've never left the house he said I've known you for 15 years I know your voice you were out there and the kid said dad he never she never left the house so we figured out very quickly that not only were they imitating human voices but they could duplicate ours so after that I told my children when you're outside, or even in the house for that matter, because, you know, they do get in the house. Um, if I call you, if I tell you to go do something, unless you physically see me, you just don't do it. Okay, you're not going to get grounded. You're not going to be in trouble. If I tell you to go do something and you do not physically see me, you absolutely do not do it. You can have a female out there that's lost a child and is in mourning and, and wants to replace her child with another child. The other thing is in their culture, if they see a child without an adult standing right there, they believe that child is abandoned and without a clan and they will grab them. Not all of them, but some of them will. 
Is this what we see happening with a lot of the missing 411 cases? Some. Some. Yes. And there are cases that I know of and I've talked to the Bigfoots that have actually taken the child. So, yes. So why are, why are Bigfoot or Dogman taking these children? Well, if a child, like I just said, if a child is not with an adult, if a child is on its own, they look at it that that child is without a clan. And they will, they, they're very maternal and they're very form, family oriented and they will take it and they will try to raise that child. Most of them don't survive. They die due to elements, not because of any abuse. That being said, I think, you know, I would be remiss if I did not say, just like with our people, there are pedophiles. OK, there are people that just abduct children for the sake of abducting children. And then you also have clans. And while well, these are very isolated and not the normal, but there are clans that are cannibalistic. You know, we have different islands out in the Pacific and all over the world where these tribal people are cannibalistic. There are cannibalistic Bigfoots, there are cannibalistic dogmen, cannibalistic goatmen. There, they are few and far between, but they do exist. Interesting. Robin McRae is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio. Got some questions coming up from the audience here. And Pam is asking, do some dogmen have big round shaped ears? Yeah. And what I found with those, and I, again, Pam, I cannot tell you conclusively because I've not DNA tested them. I have, and I think, Dave, you have a picture of her as well. Her name is Trudy, and she has the rounded ears like that. I believe that she's a hybrid between the dogman and the Bigfoot, but that's my own personal belief. I have nothing to back that up. That's just from what I've observed. Um, there are some of the dogmen that will run with the Bigfoot and actually get integrated into the clan, and that's where I've noticed some of these. So absolutely. All they right. look like a teddy bear head. Let's get to another question. This one from Nicola. You stated that Dogman is part human. What do you think it is? It's a dog. The Dogman is human, canine, and ET. And that's what I was told by them. That is not because I, any DNA that I've had tested. That is what I was told by them. Where are they from? Personally, my belief is that they are from um, Serpo and that the Ebens created them. The Evens, to begin with, all races of ETs do genetic manipulation and create cryptids that they drop down here on our planet. That's been confirmed many times, not only by myself, but by countless others. And now that they're starting to do some of these soft disclosures, which are really just a joke because we already knew it anyway, but um, there are now books that have been written on it as well, like with the Serpro Project. The Evens have readily admitted to creating a hybrid that was had the head of a dog in the body of a man now that doesn't mean that all of them came from there uh the evens are based we named them the evens okay what their actual name for their people are i i couldn't tell you but um they are an actual peaceful race there are races that are lethal like you know the dracos but um, there are races that are actually peaceful. I don't believe that they created anything to hurt anybody, but I do believe that these other races have taken what have already been genetically modified and created, and then they turn them into other things. I've seen cryptids that don't even have names yet. I don't know what they're called. I've asked the Bigfoots what they're called, and they use them, um, a blanket name of a Micaiah. They said the Micaiah is a name that means thee that walks the earth, but that has no name. And so some of these cryptids that are created not only by the government, because I know that some of them absolutely are, but there's also some that have been dropped off here by ETs and they don't have names. I have one right now that's running around here. I couldn't tell you what the heck that thing is, but it's peaceful. It doesn't bother anybody. But as far as the dogman goes, I believe the Ebens are the ones that created the original dogmen. Um, I do believe the government, and I know as a fact, have got some that are highly aggressive. I think that other races of ETs have man genetically manipulated what was already here. All right, let's get to Ann's question. What if they just howl at you and rip trees up? 
that's basically make a stand that's telling you that they don't want you there. They're showing their strength. They're showing that they are in charge of that area. That's their territory. You are not to be there. A lot of times when you see um, behavior like that, in my opinion, is because there's family units there that they have nearby or you've interrupted hunting. There could be a million reasons, but you are in an area you are not supposed to be in. They're showing you their strength. They're showing you that, hey, this is my area. You, you shouldn't even be here, but this is what I'm going to do to show you. And I look at it that where that, yes, that does look aggressive. I can understand that. But it's also giving you a warning where you can leave. Mm -hmm. I can see that. So take the message is what you're saying. Exactly. All right. Yancy is asking, what's the scariest cryptid you have encountered? Um, I don't necessarily know that it was scariest because of what cryptid it was. Um, I, I'm very fortunate. A lot of them really are just not really too bad with me. Um, the one, the, I think the one that was the scariest for me was in Texas, and it was actually a Bigfoot, believe it or not. Um, I had gone there to help set up a research site for a friend. We had his three grandchildren. He took me into this alcove where they had all these berry bushes at, and he took me back that way. We were looking at footprints and everything. We got out of the car and there were animal bones scattered everywhere. All the bushes were picked clean. And I looked at him and I said, my God, Dale, this is where they eat. What are you doing? Why are we here? And his grandchildren, there was a tree stand. They ran right up the tree stand. And you could see as the bushes were moving. Now we're in like this little horseshoe shaped area. I mean, there's only one way out and the foots were coming in from every single side. And this was not an overly nice group. I had tried to tell him that before and he would not listen. And so I actually flew to Texas for a couple of reasons, his being one of them, to look at this research site, get a better feel and tell him either to get the heck out of there while he was still alive or to help him get things going. And the leader of the clan, mine spoke with me and said, leave and, and we want you to leave and, and leave the children here. I said, that's not going to happen. And they said, we will kill you. I said, you can try. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving these children. And he said, well, you will. And we went back and forth. I said, I have permission to be here. I don't have to leave. He says, I didn't give you permission. You have to leave. I said, I have permission to be here. I'm not leaving. And I'd be happy to leave, but I'm not leaving without these children. So the kids are now scared because they're seeing all these, these brushes, the brushes moving all over the place and they're hearing noises that are scaring them. So instead of staying where I was, I walked past the children towards the Bigfoot because the kids were closer to him than I was. And I think that kind of surprised him that I would be bold enough to come close. And I was still probably, I want to say 30 to 40 feet away from him, but I walked past the kids who were in the tree stand. I wanted to put myself between the children in this, this thing, because um, if he was going to attack, I at least wanted to be the, something that it was going to get to before these little kids. I mean, I think any normal human being would have done that. And so I went forward. And when I did, there was this giant palmetto bush that came up to about my waist. And he kept telling me he was going to kill me. Dale was frozen. He was terrified. He was over by his truck standing there with his mouth open. Like he didn't know what to do. And the thing bluff charged me. He came towards me and I, I, why I did it, I don't know. I never moved. I stood right there. He bluff charged me. He got so close. It blew my hair off my shoulder and leveled the palmetto bush. And the kids had just started to come down the tree stand when he did it. So they ran right back up the tree stand. So after it happened and I stood still, I think he was more shocked that I didn't react. The only thing in my mind were these kids. That was the only thing that mattered at that point. Was I scared? Absolutely. I'm not stupid. But the only thing that mattered to me were these children. And so I told the kids, I said, I want you to come down and go towards your grandpa. And Dale's going, what should I do? What should I do? And I said, start the truck, open the doors. And he said, well, come on. And I said, I'm not budging. Get the kids in the truck. So he started the truck. The kids got in and he's like, come on. And I said, I want you to lock the doors and leave my door open. He said, okay. So he did. And this thing just kept telling me it was going to kill me. And I said, I have permission. And he said, who gave you permission? I said, Earthkeeper gave me permission. I have permission to be here. And so when I left, of course, you never turn your back. And I backed up. 
and backed all the way up to the truck. As soon as I got in the truck and I slammed the door, he hit the gas to take off. It ran up behind the truck and, and punched the, the back of the bed of the truck. Oh, wow. And we got out of there. We're gonna I think that it, would be the scariest. We're going to leave, right, leave it right there because we do have to go to break here at the bottom of the hour. Robin McRae's Incredible Encounters with Sasquatch, Dogman, the Goat Man. We got to get into the Goat Man next as <laughs> well as your questions here on Spaced Out Radio. So stay tuned. Stick around. The Wu train continues to roll here on the mighty SOR. All right, we're clear. It's good stuff here. Oh, I'm glad you're enjoying it. <laughs> I'm having fun. I'm loving it. Yeah, this I, has been great. I am loving it. Well, I hope the audience likes it. <sighs> oh, absolutely. This is what we dream of right here. <laughs> yeah, this next question is really good because I actually have watched them shave ship. I've not seen them turn into, now the ETs will shapeshift into a human. Hands down, I've watched them do that. I got attacked by one in Pennsylvania and got ripped off a of bed three times by one. But the Bigfoots, all these cryptids can shapeshift. I've not seen a Bigfoot, and I don't know that they can. When I ask them if they can shapeshift to a human, I, I'm told no. Whether that's true or them lying, I don't know. But I have seen them shapeshift into a what looked like a very large deer and a raccoon. Right. I I haven't seen the shape shifting yet, but uh, that doesn't surprise me. But that question would be really good to, to discuss because I think probably a lot of people would wonder. We could. We'll get into it. We'll yeah, get into it. Whatever you want to do. We, we get to relax. I'm right? having a blast, so. Me too. I don't usually get to talk about all the woo factors because most places, you know, they don't, they get kind of funky about it. So. Yeah, screw I'm that. I'm enjoying it. Screw that. Well, I know. And the thing is, is you can't say on one hand, you want to know everything you can learn about the Bigfoot and the other cryptids and the ETs and then say, but you can only have to deal with it in flesh and blood because that's not who they are. You either want to know or you don't want to know. I hear you. Totally hear you. Totally hear you. This is why Duke and I get along so good. Because <laughs> I just love him. He's the best. I love Duke. Duke's he amazing. Was, he was so funny because I, I had talked to him for like two years. And he's like, oh, by the way, did you know I vetted you out? I said, you what? And he said, yeah. And I, you know, I'm really naive on stuff like that. So I don't even pay attention. I just kind of like put out what I know and that's it. And don't worry about it. He's right. like, yeah. He says, you passed every test. And I'm like, well, I'm glad to know that. That's a good thing. He's like, but don't feel bad. I do that to everybody. I said, oh, okay. It's fantastic. <laughs> I could listen to you all night. I really could. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm I'm loving this, Dave. I really and truly am. I'm enjoying you thoroughly. Good. Good. You uh, and I'm glad you are. Glad you are. This is awesome. Love. It's this. just really great to be able to talk about this kind of stuff and not feel other than like on you know on Facebook they have the group. Mm -hmm. And I posted one picture up there and I got attacked and I was like, forget it. I took the picture down. I was over it. It was the first time I ever posted in the spaced out radio group. <laughs> I thought that was a dismal failure. Oh, what? Oh, well, let me, uh, let me control that next time. I didn't see it today. I had, oh, a it was, this was the other day. I put up the picture that I sent you of the UFO with the portal under it, with the head coming out. Right. That would be a really good one. If you wanted to put a picture on here, that would be a good one. Cause it usually tends to make people's little heads explode. Okay, I got to go find that one right now. Uh, let me see if I can. Let me grab my tablet and I'll resend it. And that way it's it's right down low. That's what I did with the dogman picture. I'm just uh, looking here. Let me see if I can find it. Yep. Okay. I'm sending it to you right now. Okay. And then the other one I'll send you from the UFO because people get a kick out of it. 
It's a beam coming down on my house. It doesn't show the UFO, but it shows the beam going down on my bedroom. I'll just show this right now. Uh, let's go here. So this photo here is the... Yeah, you can see the, the triangular UFO at the top. Yeah, right here. And then the portal's at the bottom with the head coming out of it. And then the picture that... Right here. Um, That's the head. No, the the portal's right there. The head's up in the upper left-hand corner. The picture next to it that I sent you is a blow-up of the portal with the head, and you can see the face. Oh, right here. Yep. Well, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? That is really interesting. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have about 18 seconds. Big thank you to G West times two, Murray, Adam, and Vinster, Kira, Andrew, and YJ for the super chats. Thank you so much. It's a great way to support what we do on this show. Here we go with the second half of Spaced Out Radio right now. Here we go with the second half of Spaced Out Radio tonight. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Really do appreciate earning your listening ears. We want to remind you that if you miss portions of this show or others, check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram, Spaced Out Radio Show. We continue on tonight with Robin McRae, incredible experiences with Bigfoot, Dogman, Aliens, Goatman. And I want to get into Goatman, if you don't mind, right off the bat before we get to more audience questions. Actually, let's get to a couple audience questions, and we're going to get into Goatman. I'm all excited here, and I'm just mixing it all up. Let's start with Tim's question here. Robin, what's your opinion on whether Sasquatch can shapeshift into the likeness of another human or any cryptid? Well, I think this is a fantastic question because um, this happens a lot, and people don't realize that they can do it. So in answer to Tim's question, absolutely. I personally have not seen them shape into another human. I have seen them um, shape into other things. Now, I will tell you just a, a real quick story on that. I, I, we had a security camera out front because I used to like to watch the deer until they ate all the deer. But we had it out front. And I one night I was looking at it because it was hooked into my tablet. And I could just go on there and look at it without being outside. And I saw what looked like this huge black deer, but it was the size of a moose. And there are no moose in South Carolina. It crossed the road up by our, we have um, pine trees that go up and down both sides of my property, went over there, got on its hind feet, and it was pulling branches from these pine trees. And I thought, what in the world is going on? Then it proceeded to walk on two legs, go towards my garage. And then I couldn't see it at that point. Next thing I know, it shows up and it's at my front porch and it sits down and it go went from this deer and it changed back to a Bigfoot and it sat down on the steps of my porch. So then it proceeded. When we were kids, we used to go and we, you'd walk on the back of your calves and do like a duck walk. And this thing did this duck walk towards the middle of my yard. And I used to put bird seed there for the cardinals. And it, it waddled like that over to where the bird seed was. And it was a Bigfoot. And it's reaching down and it's picking up the bird seed and it's eating the bird seed. And it morphed into a raccoon and then it ran off. And I had someone that was staying at my house at the time with me. And they watched the entire thing too. And I was dumbfounded. But yeah, they absolutely can morph. I mean, any of your cryptids, anything with an ET base in it can do that. I have not seen them shape shift into another human. I have watched the ETs do it. I was attacked by one in Pennsylvania. Um, it actually 
followed me um, back to a hotel room. I knew that it was reptilian. I saw the eyes on it, um, the movement. And so I already had known it. It got hold of me once I got in the hotel room and it literally grabbed me, drug me off the bed. A friend of mine, we had gone up into the mountains to do some work and she was in one bed. I was in the other bed and I was fine one minute, paralyzed the next, and then it tried to drag me off the bed. I finally was able to get my arm free to hit the nightstand, which woke up my friend. She reached over, grabbed me by the arms, and she's trying to pull me back on the bed. She couldn't see anything. I couldn't see anything. I do have the ability to look at something, whether it's cloaked or not, and see it, whether anybody else can see it. I can also see if it's when I look at something and it's not the shape that you're seeing is not what it really is. I can look at it and see what it truly is. And this happened three times. I got drugged off the bed by the time we ended up leaving in the middle of the night, I had scratches and marks all over my legs from it. So yeah, the stuff it, they can morph, but the ETs are the worst. Bolenium is asking, how come we still don't have a body discovered in the forest? Um, number one, we do. But what happens when we anybody finds them is the government moves in and take them. The other thing is it is very rare to find a body because the Bigfoots bury their dead. They actually have a, some type of a funeral that they do. They have a certain way that they bury them, a position that they bury in the grave. Nine out of ten times there are things put on top of the grave so that you will never know that there's a grave. They will plant a tree on top of it. They will put rocks on top of it. They, you'll never know it's there. But they do bury their dead. They don't just leave them there to decompose. They, they actually, um, there is people, there are people that have seen them doing a form of a funeral. It's very common. That does make sense. Yeah, that they are people. They bury their dead like they do. They also do four days of silence after a death. So for people that do interact with them and they go, it's like, you know, total dead silence, no communication for three or four days after that time period, when they get where they'll talk again, you can ask them. And generally it's because of a dead. What do their graveyards look like? Um, it depends. I mean, they mark the graves. I really, for their own privacy, I'd rather not go into that if that's okay, Dave, just because out of respect for them. I mean, we don't need anybody going out and trying to dig anything like that up, but they do have their own graves. They do have a way that they mark them. And it, I will say this, it is so subtle. You could walk right over the top of it and never know. I have been to graves before. Yes. They've asked me to do blessings on them. Are dog man the same way? I cannot say a hundred percent. Yes to that. Do I believe that? Yes. Interesting. Wow. That just makes me want to run I can out. make it say a hundred percent conclusive on the Sasquatch that yes, they do these things as far as the dog man. My experiences with them is yes, they do that as well. It would make sense. Yeah. It it would. Tony is wondering if you had any Windigo experiences. The only time I've ever had an experience with the Wendigo was several, several years ago. And it was some work that I was doing. There was a lot of paranormal work being done. Um, to say I was up close and personal with it in a flesh and blood situation. No, I cannot say that. Did I see it in a paranormal field? Yes. All right. G West is wondering, are any of the Sasquatch species alien? All of them. <laughs> they're, they're part ET. It's what their body chemistry is. It's who they are. I, uh, but I do, I would like to point out one thing that people get very confused with on this is they all have paranormal abilities. Every single last one of them. Occasionally you run into one that doesn't use paranormal abilities and people just think automatically, well, then they're different. They don't have paranormal abilities. That is false. What happens is, and I always go back to the same thing when, and I relate it to the Amish. In the Amish culture, you have certain sectors that don't have electricity. They don't have vehicles. They don't have a lot of things. You have other sectors of them that will have certain 
things to make their life easier. When it comes to these paranormal abilities, they, they're all born with them. If they are in a clan that in that clan, the paranormal abilities are not allowed because then their clan, they don't believe that they should be used. They don't teach them to the kids. So the kids don't know they have them. Okay. So what happens is they start out with life and they don't know they have them until they're older. And maybe they leave that clan and they go to another clan and somebody is like, well, yeah, you can do this too. So it's a learned thing from the parents or from the clan members, but they are all born with the abilities. Yes. All right. That just, okay. I'm going to run with that. It sounds, it sounds good. It well, sounds it's like good. we all know we can ride a bike or we can swim, but unless we're taught, we don't know. Okay. And it, it just depends on the group that they have. There are some clans that are strictly old school. They stick by the old laws, the old ways. They don't bend. They're not allowed contact with us, our hairless humans, as they call us. And they are very strict in that way. And in those clans, sometimes they don't allow the paranormal abilities. Then you have some sectors that are much more loose. And it's a free-for-all. You know, but for every 10... Bigfoot that you're going to run into, I would say eight to nine are going to use their paranormal abilities at some point. With their clans, how, how many clans are they running in? Well, it, they're family groups and it's like, you know, they'll have, they can bring an outsider into the clan, but it's, it's their children and their children's children's and the grandparents. And I, the clan that was at my house, they had different ones that would come through my yard all the time. And I kept a notebook with a description and what I was naming them or calling them. And I had 60 individuals. I also have seen clans that have maybe 20. I've got three or four clans that live around my house right now, and they don't seem to be very large clans. They seem to be a little bit smaller. So again, it's pretty individualized. I mean, we, it's very important that we realize that these are people just like us. So they are all individual. There are no two alike. They don't look alike. You get a lot of people that say, that picture doesn't look right. That's not what they look like. That's a bunch of all. They're very individualized. I've seen some that have the dark skin. I've seen some with the light skin. I've seen some with the rounder faces. I've seen some with the long faces, conial heads. Conial heads are not limited to an area. It's just how they're built. I mean, really, that's that. It, people say, well, the ones over here all have cone heads. No, they don't. Not that I'm aware of. And I don't know everything, so I could be wrong, but I don't think that I am. Because I've had some in our clans around me that have the, the top colonial heads. I had one male with a cone hen that came into the feeding area. And he was not even from our clan. I think he was just hungry and wandering around. And he saw me and he cloaked. Well, he didn't cloak his whole body. And the top of the cone was still there. It looked like a yarmulke going through my woods. It was hysterical. I laughed my head off. But I also, like Shadow, I'm very, very close to him. This boy's been following me around for years. And he, he's gotten 10 feet for me in flesh and blood. His head and body is just like a man. It is not the flattened nose. It is not the, the conial head. He looks like a man covered with hair, including on his eyelids. But they are just all very unique. They are all very individualized. The smell that people say that they get being around Sasquatch, okay, or any of these creatures... Are they like a skunk where they're just ripping one like a fart? And and, I, and I'm not making fun of this question, even right. though it's going to sound funny. Is that the odor that we are, the pungent odor that people are well, smelling? Yes and no. Um, my And I'm going to tell you just what my belief is on that, because again, this is something I don't have any way to prove. I know a lot of people say that they use it as a defense mechanism or whatever. Um, and they very well could. I'm not going to lie. But you know, we have people in our culture that are not exactly wonderful with, with hygiene. And you notice a body odor to them. This is the same basic principle. Um, we have one out of uh, Texas. His name is Mikhail. And dearest boy ever, but boy, does that boy like skunks. He will rub skunks all over him from top to bottom. He trances the skunk so that he can rub the, the smell all over him or he'll piss him off so that they spray and he can get sprayed. And you know, he'll come to visit from Texas. I know when he's there every time because he stinks so bad, it burns my eyes. 
you know, I've had certain Bigfoots that will come in and they absolutely reek and they're not in fear. They're not being scared. They're not being aggressive. They just have body odor. And then I have some that just smell like a very mild dirt. I have some that smell nothing. I mean, you can't even tell that there's anything, you know, there. A lot of the females when they're pregnant, people have stated, and as well as myself, that they smell like flowers, whether they're rubbing that all over them or if that's maybe the body chemistry they smell when they're, they are pregnant, that's a possibility as well. But nine out of 10 times, it's a hygiene thing. Okay. And, and, and that does make sense. Yeah. That yeah does they like certain smells. They'll go roll in it. I mean, we had one that would go out. The people behind us in Michigan had a cow farm. He'd go out there and roll around in the cow pie. You know, I mean, but that doesn't mean that they all do that. That was that. They're so individualized. They really and truly people don't realize how individualized they really are. Let's talk a little bit of goat man here. Okay. For people who may not know, tell us what uh, the goat man is. Well, I have not dealt with him a lot. I have had three or four experiences as far as speaking with him. And I do remote viewing and remote viewing with him. And I tell you, I'd rather deal with the dogmen. I think they're crabby on a good day. I think that they act like they, you know, are more upset about their looks than, than anything else. But they tend to be, I feel like they're more territorial than the other things are. I don't want to say they're really mean and aggressive, but they tend to be more loaf they even than the dogmen are they just don't want to be bothered now I, i've had people that have come to me that have have had them around them and i've talked to them you know and i'm like you know why are you even around and they they always have a reason as to why they feel they need to be where they're at but they're not the friendliest of things where are they located all of these cryptids are everywhere. I mean, it's a matter of jumping into a portal and ending up wherever they want to be. Okay, because I know there is the Goat Man of Texas. Yeah, and I, I have heard that in some of the southern states, Louisiana, that type of thing, that they're they're prevalent down there. But again, I you know, these things go in and out of portals like we walk through the doors at Walmart. You know, they can end up anywhere. They, they really can. Um, I, you know, maybe in some of these southern states where there's not as much of the snow or whatever, they see them a little bit more. I don't know. I'm from Michigan with the snow and everybody's like, well, yeah, all the Bigfoots and all the cryptids take off when there's snow. That's a load of bull. They basically, they go underground or in caves where it's warm. They build fire. Mine were never gone. They were not as active because just like, you know, we hide out in the house. Because it's cold outside. But yet, don't expect anything less from them. They're a people. They may be an ancient people and in some areas more of an uncivilized people. But they're still a people. It doesn't change what they are. Okay. So with these goat men, are they a, are they a violent species towards human? Um, I have dealt with some that were not violent. Maybe kind of bitchy, but not violent. But I do think that they just don't want to be bothered with us, I guess is the best way to put it. I'm not going to say that they're hyper aggressive or anything like that, because the ones that I've talked with and remote viewed really haven't tried to do a lot of harm. Um, I, I think that, you know, they may run somebody out of an area, but I don't think they're really trying to kill anybody. But they just don't want to be bothered. And that's what's very common with some of these cryptids. It's not so much that they want to hurt people as much as they want you out of their area. They don't want to be bothered. And, you know, that brings me to another point where you see a lot of them that go up high in the mountains. Now, Duke's research area is tremendous. He's got some wonderful foots there. He really is lucky. And they absolutely adore him. I've talked to them multiple times. But you have certain areas such, you know, in like Oklahoma or even in Montana, I think, Russia especially, they go higher up in the mountains because they're trying to get away from us. But yet we are hell-bent that we're going to follow them there. You know, at least Duke is respectful. 
He has his campsite. He has his gifting area. He has his area. He does the research. And he's smart enough to know to let these things come to him. Don't go running them down and pissing them off, intruding on their lives, pushing them into a corner. He does it the way you should do it. That's why he has the success that he has. You know, I commend him for that because he goes out of his way to be respectful and it's reciprocated. They adore him. I mean, I talked to, to them the other day for him and they truly adore him because he does it the right way. And that's the difference. You know, when they move up in these higher mountain ranges, and I'm not saying, you know, that in some of the lower mountain areas, they're fine. But when they get in the higher mountain ranges or they go in these out of the way places, they do it to be left alone. We are the ones that push the buttons. We are the ones that keep going after them. And then there's an altercation. But who's the one that everybody's going to go gunning for? It's not us. It's them. But yet we were trespassing. We were the ones that went there and irritated them. It's always the case, though, isn't it? Oh, we're terrible. I'd rather deal with all the cryptids than humans. I'll be honest with you. Any day of the week. Chad is wondering, the Chad Smith, what's the best area of Michigan for seeing or communicating with Sasquatch? Um, I think Michigan is such a hotbed. They really everywhere is. But, I mean, I it's been just a tremendous area. They've even had them living in the, the houses in downtown Detroit. They've had sightings of them going into these condemned houses where nobody's living there. If you really want to to do it i would try manistee national forest it covers a massive range and you know obviously there's going to be several clans in there the pigeon area i don't recommend there is not that there aren't some nice ones there but there's also some very aggressive one in the pigeon area like pigeon river and stuff so i would be careful in that area um, i did a ton of research in various parts of michigan i love the manistee national forest there were certain areas that they had some that were not quite as warm and fuzzy as others, but I've never had any get aggressive. You're lucky. Do you feel lucky by that? Absolutely. Absolutely. But when I go into an area, you know, I do my best to try to be respectful. Um, if I notice, if I pick up any energy that doesn't feel warm and fuzzy, then I know that that isn't what they want. And I don't push it. Now, I, have I had some follow me out of the woods? Absolutely. I was very glad to get out of there, but they never tried anything. I had a very dear friend of mine and I, we went into um, an area of woods that were old. Well, they still use them for uh, dirt bike trails, which just so everybody out there, the foots hate dirt bike trails. Absolutely hate it. They, they don't like the motor from the bikes. They don't like them ripping through there where their family and their kids play. But we went back there. And this woods was so dense and so thick. We literally went in and we were in there less than an hour. And by five o'clock, it was as black as black could be. We couldn't see to get out. And we had on our, we were trying to find our way out. We couldn't, we had no cell signal. So we couldn't even GPS it to get out of there. And it went from perfect daylight to complete blackness. I couldn't see my friend standing next to me. And we had off to the right. They were killing a raccoon over there and they're trying to eat it. And you can see all this eye shine and the raccoon screaming bloody murder. And on the left hand side, um, we had three of them that were over there and they were communicating with me and they were not happy that we were there. They were all trying to hunt. They were all trying to feed their families. And here are these two stupid women running around in the woods. They didn't do anything to us. But they definitely escorted us out. Makes sense. Yeah. They didn't touch us. They didn't even try to scare us. They would get close so that we knew to move forward. And we basically got let out. We have one minute left here before we got to go to break. I'm going to get to Cousin Gary's question here. If you're friendly, do these cryptids pick up on that? 100%. They know your thoughts in your heart before you even have a chance to think about it. Very cool. I always like getting Cousin Gary's questions in there because literally he is my cousin. And they will know what you're going to do before you even have the thought process to finish thinking it in your brain. They will already know. And they know your heart. 
Do they like a good mustache? Because Cousin Gary has a fantastic lip. I bite. think that they think that's pretty cool because of their hair. They like my hair. They're obsessed with my hair because it's frizzy. It's thick. I'm basically a Yeti. I <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you know, as long as they like a good solid lip blade, I'll tell you, that, that's that's Alberta Ukrainian right there. There are some that will actually get the long, long beard. Oh, that's nice. And then you'll see where they braid it. It's hysterical. All right. Uh, Robin, I'm going to get you to hold on right there because we are going to go to break here at the top of the hour. Robin McRae, we got her for another 30 minutes on Spaced Out Radio. Then in the bottom of hour number three, we're going to warm up the Magic 8 Ball. It is that time once again. Cryptid Talk continues on Spaced Out Radio right after this. All right, we're clear. <laughs> <clears throat> By the way, Cousin Gary named his mustache Chad Smith. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yep. But you know, they like that stuff. They used to, um, I would always sleep with my window open in Michigan. I don't hear in South Carolina because of the snakes. The snakes are just, just god awful, which is why I'm moving back to Michigan. But um, I would leave my window open. And if I had a screen, they'd just simply take the screen out. But my bed was always by the window and I would feel them at night. And it was like, I, they would trance me so I couldn't move, but they would play with my hair and I'd wake up in the morning and I'd have mud and leaves in my hair. And they've come up totally cloaked behind me in the woods and just start petting my hair. <laughs> it's crazy. What do you think the role of the sentries are? They're basically guards. They're protecting the clan. They're making sure that, you know, nobody that's coming in is going to do harm to the children or to the clans. You know, they have in these clans, they have jobs assigned to them. You know, they have somebody that handles medicine. They have somebody that's a warrior, a hunter, you know, someone that's going to help with the children or somebody that is the sentry. And it's basically a guard. They're just protecting. Because we got chased out in 2018, my buddy Merle my buddy Mark and I, we were doing a paranormal investigation at a crash site here where 52 people died in 1965. And long story short, we heard the samurai chatter. Mm -hmm. And we went back to, twice we heard it. And we went back to the crash location and I later on, I ended up finding the trail, how this one Sasquatch had snuck up on Mike. It was making noise from about 20 feet away from behind mm -hmm. the brush and trees. <clears throat> Scared the daylights out of him. But the second one came at Mark through the trees. He was about 80, 90 feet from us in a different direction. And the trail out was right beside us. Yeah. And there's no. one way in and one way out. Yeah. No, they really, they, they act just like a guard. They're protecting an area for whatever their group's reasoning is that they feel that needs to be protected or they'll have them stand guard. So maybe the rest of the clan is sleeping or, or whatever, depending on the area. It sounds like that area, they had a vested interest in it, whether it be out of respect for the 52 that died. You know, it's very common to see them around graveyards and that type of thing. Um, but for whatever reason, they felt that area needed to be protected. Yeah. Uh, chat room, wrenches, don't worry about polar eclipse anymore. Uh, I'm tired of his racial comments, and he is blocked. Okay? I hate blocking people. I really, really do hate blocking people. But the the comments are just getting ridiculous. Obviously, he can't control himself, uh, much like a child can't control their own pee, okay? So we don't need that crap around here, and uh, I've had enough. So bye-bye, Polar Eclipse. I love you, but uh, I'll. you need to time out for a few days or weeks, and I will review it over time. But we don't need that uh, crap in our 
chat room at all, ever, ever. Okay, I put up with it, and it just continued. I asked you to stop a number of times. You did not. Now you got the wrath. You pissed me off. So, bye-bye. Go take a long time out. <clears throat> Sorry about that. That's all right. I hope I'm not causing too many problems. No, no it's not you. I, I got this... Uh, this uh listener he he's usually pretty good i don't know if he's if he is uh you know drinking the aqua velva from grandpa's medicine cabinet uh <laughs> as the show continues on and you know but that's just what happens and i don't you know he for some reason he goes into these racist tirades and tries to get all political and you know yeah. you, you ask them to stop you ask them to stop but they keep continuing and you got to uh sometimes draw the line and this yeah. room this room is not a democracy the chat room is not a democracy it is it is a davocracy i make the rules right and i don't need his idiotic comments getting me in trouble with youtube right oh yeah you've got too much invested absolutely absolutely so we got uh, about one minute, so uh, we'll move on from there. Sorry about that. No, you're fine. Just hate that bullshit. I know. It's like if you don't want to hear it, then, you know, you go somewhere else. You don't have to. I just think that, you know, simple human kindness isn't that big of a deal to do, but some people just find it very difficult, and I don't yeah. understand that. Yep, I agree. I agree. It just makes me shake my head. I give a lot of chances. You know, the funny part about it is, hi, Swan Man, how you doing? I will take the heat for that. On social media, they'll go and, and blame me for a bunch of crap, but they'll never mention what, what they say. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Whatever. Whatever. A uh, big thank you to Tim, G West times two, Murray, uh, uh, Adam, Ann, Vinster, Kira, Andrew, and YJ for the amazing super chats. Here we go with hour three, everyone. Would you like to connect with us? Head to spacedoutradio.com for all your latest show info. Now, back to Dave Scott and SOR. Here we go with the third and final hour of Spaced Out Radio tonight. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. We really do appreciate earning your listening ears. Wherever you are on this beautiful planet we call Earth, want to say hello to everyone listening in on our terrestrial affiliates around North America and digitally on TalkStream Live, oh. Revolution Radio, and KPNL. All of our archives are free by going to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club, Facula. Facula or Facula? I don't know, but the clam <laughs> sets password each and every night right here on Spaced Out Radio. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram, Spaced Out Radio Show. We continue on tonight with Robin McRae, her amazing experiences and encounters with every cryptid being you could find. And I love stories like these, these personal encounters. It just makes me beam, makes me beam with <laughs> happiness because I love you, Robin. And oh, I, I, I can guarantee you that next time you're, you're definitely coming back. You're oh, I love you too, Dave. I try to, if you can put that one picture we talked about with the portal, they might I, get a kick about that. Well, let, we only got a, a few more minutes left. I want to get to some some more questions from our audience, okay? Because I know they're lining up. Oh, sure. Greco on Twitter is asking, how do the cryptids feel about humans constantly encroaching on their land? They hate it. They absolutely hate it. They they don't, like, their idea of property lines are not like ours, are they? have territories. Um they don't, you know, they don't understand our properties the way our, you know, our property actually works, but they don't like it. 
like you said before, this is a matter of if you're sitting at home in your living room and your family's there and somebody barges in your front door, what are you not going to do to protect yourself and your family? It's not about what you're going to do. What are you not going to do? You're going to do everything in your power because this is your space. Your home is your home. So when you walk out your front door, you're now in their home. You've left your home. You're in their home. So we go out in these areas because we're so curious and we want to see. But we have to, at some point, we have to determine just because you can doesn't mean you should. And you have to realize do you want good interaction or bad interaction? Because I'm going to promise you, your bad interaction is going to make your worst nightmare seem like nothing. If you want to learn, if you want to have experiences, if you want to continue to have experiences, you want positive interaction. And you can only go, I mean, obviously, when you go in the woods at all, you're now in their world. So you're going to go into their world at some point. You have to decide in your mind, how far are you willing to push this? And the easiest way to actually get an encounter, have a go to a campground, have a bonfire, cook some hot dogs, laugh, sing, be happy, draws them in like magnets. They are more comfortable coming to you than they will ever be you going to them. That's awesome. I do hear here in British Columbia, a lot of encounters happening in campgrounds. Yeah, they do all over. I, my son lives in um, Vancouver. Oh, cool. And I went to see, he lives on the Musqueam Reservation. And um, we went up hiking in the mountains one day. And I'll never forget, I came down and there was a massive, massive, he had to be 12 foot foot standing behind a tree there and he was not happy I mean everybody was hiking up and down these mountains he wasn't you know he didn't do anything he didn't act on it but he made sure that I felt that energy that he was not happy with all the people there I didn't take it that it was directed at me as much as it was the whole because there were so many people there it does that doesn't surprise me and do you know outside of Yellowstone National Park that the mountains, the Cascade Mountains from Vancouver all the way into the Fraser Valley are the number two most uh, missing people in David Politis's Missing 411. Yeah. And Vancouver Island, there's, there's more than two groups, but there's two. There is what they call the Eater Group, which is the cannibalistic ones, and then there's the Friendly Ones. And they're actually pretty much divided on Vancouver Island. Years ago, um, I used to mind speak with them because I had been contacted by the really nice ones and the cannibalistic ones were moving into their territory and there was a lot of fighting going on and they just basically, I don't know if it was peace talks I was supposed to do or what, but anyway, they got back divided and they, it was simply one end of the island were the highly aggressive and the other end were the nice ones. Hmm. All right, let's move to another question. Vinny is asking, Robin, do you have a space family? Honestly, I would probably say yes. What they are and where they are, I don't know. Um, I have been attacked by several ETs just because of different things that I can do. Um, I've also had very kind ones show up. So I will say this, as crazy as it sounds, when I was four years old, and I was abducted. I was a very small child at the time. And there was a small gray looking alien that, and she had actually, it looked like she had almost like not a shawl, but some type of a robe on her. And I remember she was in an alcove and she reached her hand out to me. She had these very dark gray, long spindly cold fingers. And I remember her touching my wrist and she told me that she was my mother. And I said she was nuts because my mom was at home. And then, of course, I was a cocky four-year-old. And I, I was like, I didn't realize that I, I could be in danger. I could be anywhere. I just was, you know, being cocky. And I was like, you know, when my mom finds out I'm here, you are in so much trouble. Because when she checks out my bed and I'm not in it, she is going to be so mad at you. And you're going to have to deal with my mom. But you are not my mom. So, you know, take that what it what it meant when they said that to me. I don't know. I do remember the panels of the buttons that were on the ship. I remember the arc of the doorway and the, there were like hieroglyphs that went around the arc of the doorway. And when I looked through the doorway, 
Um, there was a CAT scan machine, a CAT scan machine like we have now. And this was back in 1968. They didn't have those then. And there was a man there, a very thin man that was one of our people that was laying on that table. And then there was a very tall gray with lighter skin. And he looked like he had some kind of a jacket, like a lab type coat on it. And there was another smaller gray. And then on the far walls in both of those rooms were all these multicolored buttons, like big buttons, like as big around as a tennis ball were each of the buttons. And they were multicolored on the wall. And there were smaller grays that were doing a series of, of hitting these different colored buttons. Mm. That sounds cool. That yeah, I mean, you know, it wasn't it wasn't a scary event by any means. Um, she kept insisting she was my mom, and I kept insisting that she wasn't. And then I told her off about my mom, and they eventually I, I woke up, I was home. B. Hoff is asking. Is Goat Woman actually Baphomet? I'm not familiar with Baphomet. Sorry, guys. That's I know okay. I probably should, but I don't. Um, as All far right. as... It, Let's move on. Yeah. Let's, sorry. Okay. Adam is asking, how does one choose a gifting site? This is a good question. Yeah, it really is. Um, my advice for that would be look for structures. Okay. Look for some of the signs that they're there. Look for the stick structures or rock stacking or anything like that. Um, tree snaps, those kind of things. And then when you find those areas, move maybe 50 foot away from them so that you're not being intrusive. But you're in that area. They'll find it. The other thing I encourage everybody to do is whether or not you are able to mind speak and hear them, they can always hear you. It's not where... If you're not hearing them, they're not hearing you. They can read your mind like you wouldn't believe. And they well, can hear when you speak. Can I just interrupt you there for a second? Sure. Because there have been times when we've got into the forest, like this past Saturday, and you could just feel the energy. Yes. Is that leading to mind speak? Um, my, yeah, mind speak um, is not just words that you're going to hear. Mind speak is a feeling where all of a sudden you walk in an area and it's like you all of a sudden know everything that's happened there. No words are spoken. It's a feeling. It can be a feeling. It can be a picture in your mind. It can be a video playing in your mind. It's a knowing. It's a thought. It's all of these things. It's not limited to words. Some oh. people get words. Some people just get other areas of it. I get it all different ways. Everybody is different. It's, again, this is a very individualized thing. So right. feeling that change in energy is reading. It's actually considered reading that energy, but it can also yeah. be turned into a form of mind speak. Because here's what happened on Saturday. We decided that we were going to go out for a late night drive into the forest. And I've always wanted to go into this part of the area to go look for Sasquatch because I do believe that this is a hot spot area that I do need to investigate more. Now, there's, sure. there's an old trapper down there uh, in that area who, who used to trap, who basically said him and his dogs were used to the Sasquatch in that area. Mm -hmm. Okay. To me, that's a good hint. That's a good clue. Sure. So we go driving. It's late. There's a thunderstorm out. And the thunderstorm is like a couple miles ahead of us. So you can see the lightning yeah. down in the trees. And I'm like, oh, crap. This isn't going to spook anything under the road, you know, because they're all going to be, everything's going to be buckled down. Even a bear is going to be buckled down. There was no deer, no nothing. And we saw one rabbit and one baby coyote. That was it. But <clears throat> we went probably 25 miles into the forest. And beautiful drive, you know, and coming out, turned around, could have kept going, decided to turn around and saw one flash in the trees, just like a, like an orange flash, like an orange orb that just went poof, gone. Mm -hmm. And so I was watching it through my headlights because I'm driving and I'm pointing at it. And I'm pointing at it. We get right to that area. And immediately it was like, get the hell out. Yeah. And the last time I, I've been around Sasquatch. I don't 
fear Sasquatch. This energy was just different. It was heavy like paranormal. Yeah. It was heavy like paranormal. It was scary. It felt moody, like like it's time to leave, that if you look behind you, there's going to be something following you type of energy. Right. Am I reading that correctly in, in Absolutely, dog? Absolutely, 100%. Dog Number man. one, one of the abilities that you have is just, is reading energy. So you're going to pick up on energy more so than other people that may be with you. Um, I, I think you've probably noticed that in the past, oh, yeah. like you've gone That's out right. with people. It's because one of the gifts that you have is the ability to read energy. You're just starting, I want to say within the last three to five years, you're starting to pick up on it more than more and more. I don't know how correct that is, but that's Eight what I'm years. getting. Eight years. Okay. So you're now being able to pick up on it more and more. And the, what the best thing about that is, Dave, is reading energy will save your butt out in the woods. Like, I can't even express to you how important it is. And I encourage anybody that does do mind speak, learn how to read energy because anything can talk to you in your mind or project something into your mind and make you think it's your best friend when it's really out to take you out. And the only way that you have any type of defense against that happening is by reading energy. And reading energy is vital. People do not realize how important this is. So for you to be able to do that, you are ahead of the game. Okay. Listen to it and respect it. Okay. I want to follow that up though. To me, I've only had this type of energy one previous time. And when I go through my list, because everything that I have learned has an energy pattern. For everything instance, has a signature. Yeah. For for instance, if you're dealing with extraterrestrials, the energy is very high. It's very mm -hmm. fast paced. It's very you know anxiety type of energy. You know, like like. I've it's never... almost like they're soulless. They're cold. It's just it's a it's a weird energy. It's like, I got to go. I got to go right now. Here we go. Let's make this happen. Almost almost like you're on speed or something. Okay. Paranormal energy with ghosts seems mm -hmm. to be very heavy and morbid and dark and, and depressing. Yep. Sasquatch energy seems to be, you know, kind of like the 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 energy. It's comforting. It, it is, but... There is a little bit of a fear element because of the the size of these creatures. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, you know, but what I felt here, I've only ever felt once before, and that felt to me in translating everything that this must be dogman type energy. Yeah. Now I, you know, the dogman that I've dealt with on a regular basis. It is a different energy. It doesn't feel like a bad energy or you know, aggression or anything, but there definitely is a difference to it. And as you're out in the woods and you're out around these cryptids, you tend to be able to pick it out more and more. It's like if you were to go out with a group of four or five of your friends and you close your eyes and they walk up behind you, you're going to be able to pick up which one it is because your body automatically recognizes that energy signature. Even if you don't, your body does. And so you automatically have some sense of knowing of who it is. And that's pretty much the same thing that happens when you go out in the woods with all these different cryptids. Your body learns it. Right. Your mind may not know it right away, but your body does recognize it. So when you go from having a Sasquatch around you and then all of a sudden a dogman comes in or a goatman comes in or an ET comes in, your body will react even before you do. So your body is going to react to that change in the energy. It's going to react to the change in what's coming in. And that's going to be a telltale sign. The people that you go out with, like you personally, in your research area, need to keep an eye on you because your body handles energy really well. It reacts to it and it recognizes it. So you're kind of like the person that you want to take out in the woods <laughs> because they're going to watch you and see what read you get on the place. No, and I and I, I can understand that, and, and you know I don't like talking about my own intuition or anything too much on the show. But I'm trying to figure out what this energy is because here's what happened: once we lost that energy, all of a sudden 
extraterrestrial UFO type energy. Yeah, see, I'm not I'm not picking up from what you're telling me. And like I try to do what they call what I call an energy read or an energy trace and track it back. I don't think it was a dogman. I think you had something that the okay, I wasn't gonna go into this, but I'm gonna do it real quick. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Here's the bottom line. The ETs, certain groups of ETs want our Bigfoot dead. They were put here on this planet to watch us and report back. They didn't do it because of humanity that they have because they're part human. They didn't do what the ETs wanted them to do. They have what they call a robotic Bigfoot. I've watched them dump them off of a ship. I've watched them try to collect ours. And these things are basically lean, mean, killing machines. Their only purpose on our planet is to kill. Basically, they're trying to round up the Bigfoot, take them back, and then the, the ETs that are doing this are destroying them. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's the ETs that created them. It means these are the ones that are trying to enslave them to do what they want them to do. And the Bigfoot are not doing it. Actually, Duke and I did a show on it on World Bigfoot Radio, if anybody wants to go check it out. But um, the thing is, is they are actively trying to kill them. The energy trail that I'm pulling off of you in some of these situations like with that, that's what you had out there. And that's why you saw the UFO. Makes sense. Makes sense, but I didn't tell you that I saw a UFO. There was a UFO there that night. I know. <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you how I know. <clears throat> Is when we can't, we knew we were being followed by a UFO. We knew we were. We just kept going. And when we came out of the forest, got on the highway there was a cloud break. So if you if you take the moon mm -hmm. at, at high noon and real thick clouds in between, okay, or underneath the moon, mm -hmm. there was one speck of bright white light sticking out of the clouds looking at us. Yeah. And the other thing, too, is we have our storms that are just part of our world. They're a natural storm. The ETs also create a storm for their own benefits, and their ships come in inside these storms. And so it's not uncommon to see clouds that are shaped like an, a UFO. And not all the time, but I would say maybe 80 to 90% of the time, they actually are a UFO. The ETs create severe weather to their own advantage so that they can use that to bring in ships during these storms. We have about two and a half minutes left with you tonight. Where can people find you, your information, if they want to pass any stories or gain some information from you? Um, I'm on Facebook under Robin Haynes McCray, or if you get, you know, any of the World Bigfoot radio stuff, I usually try to stick around with Duke. And he always knows how to find me because I talk to him daily. So you can reach me that way. But I'm also on Facebook. And like I said, I'm under Robin Haynes McRae. Yes. Otherwise, just type in woo on <laughs> Facebook and you will get Robin. Robin, it has been such a pleasure to have you Oh, thank all. you so much. I thoroughly have enjoyed it. And I really appreciate you taking the time and having oh, me on. For sure. for sure, because I I love these true these these true tales of these experiences because I know there's a lot of shows out there, podcasts out there who don't want to talk about these subjects because they don't. they're too far off the ledge. I'm telling you right now, this is perfect for our audience. And a big thank you to Duke from World Foot Big. Oh, definitely. We love thank him. You. And this is only, I mean, we've been doing this for two and a half hours. It's been incredible. Dave, I just adore you. You're wonderful. And I thank you so much for having me here. We haven't even scratched the surface, buddy. Oh, I know. I can sense that. <laughs> I can totally sense that. And I'm okay with that because that just means that we got to bring you back. Yeah, of course. That's, that's what that means. Yeah, it and would I'm, be fun. And I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm I am too. I, I, like I said, I was very excited about doing this show, uh, more so than some of the other shows that I've done, not including Duke's, because I always love doing Duke's show because him and I get along so well. But um, I was really excited about this, and it's been absolutely wonderful. I And, and I agree with you. I agree with you because – like I said, anytime we get to talk uh, uh, 
Bigfoot or or anything around those lines, I'm always game. I'm always yeah. game. I love these topics. I, and I want to learn more. And I think a lot of our people want to learn more as well because we are all striving to try and get that information on how to communicate with this lovely, lovely creature. So I, I want to say a big thank you once again, Robin McCray. Oh, you're welcome. And you've got my number, Dave. Get hold of me anytime you want. Oh, um, there's a good chance that's going to happen. <laughs> I hope and, so. Yeah. I, I mean, any like I said, you like talking monsters. We like hearing stories about monsters. <laughs> so it just yeah, works. Yeah, they're kind of like my family. They've saved my life like four times. So, you know, I kind of have to stick with them. Really appreciate you. Robin McRae, everybody. As we Take care, everybody, and thank you. As we send off Robin into the sunset. <laughs> And we're going to get ready because it's a feature you guys love. We got the Magic 8 Ball. We're going to warm it up. Ask your questions. Psychic Connections next with the Magic 8 Ball on Spaced Out Radio. Great show, Robin. Oh, thank you so much. I really loved it, Dave. Contact me anytime. Absolutely. I Absolutely. hope it was received well for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're going to do this again. I'm telling you. I love this power woo that you bring. I do. Oh, it's fun. I Like I said, I've been really blessed. And, you know, these guys, my core group are just like my family. And they know that I'll go to the wall for them. And it goes both ways. They've said, like I said, they've saved my life four times. Oh, that's wonderful. So it's, yeah, they're stuck with me. I will let you get some sleep. I, want, I, I, I promise you, you will be back on this show before the end of the year. Sounds great. You take I, care, sweetie. I will let Dirty Filth know, a.k.a. Klaus, to get a hold of you. That sounds wonderful. Take care. Take care. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, what a sweetheart. What an absolute sweetheart she is. Genuine. Genuine. Oh, love it. Love it. That's the way I like it. Anytime we can have some good woo like that, that's awesome. That's good stuff. Hmm. <clears throat> Great job, Duke. Thank you for the introduction again, buddy. Amazing, amazing stuff. Hey, Marie, do you want to check your uh, text message, please? Jello, what's happening? Thank you, Eric, with a K. That's why we're number four. That's why we're number four right there, buddy. It's for you. No, the light was uh, white. It's like a white orb sticking out of the clouds. It's kind of cool. All right, uh, in about uh, two minutes, I'm going to get you guys, or in about a minute and a half, I'm going to get you guys start putting your questions in for the uh, um, 
thought of the day, or not the thought of the day, what the hell am I talking about? Magic 8 Ball. The watermelon is actually a hat. That is uh, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders of the Canadian Football League. Their fans are nuts. And I had a uh, a fan of theirs who's a fan of this show send me that hat of the watermelon. These are people who think that it's really cool at minus 20 below Celsius to uh, go out to the football field with no shirts on and watermelons on their head. Crazy people. Vanner Smith, what's going on? One minute. One minute. No, that, that hat's pinned there. All right, warming up the eight ball. Who's ready? Put your questions in capital letters. If you don't mind, because we're going to get going here momentarily, I want to say a big thank you to uh, Ozzy Rob, Ozzy Steve, Black Dragon, Tim, G West times two, Murray, Adam, Anne, Vinny, Kira, Andrew, and YJ for the amazing super chats tonight. Really do appreciate your love and support of Spaced Out Radio. We're going to get going here in about 10 seconds. Thank you to all the veterans who are hanging on out, listening in. We appreciate you. And of course, all of our regulars like Ozzy Rob and Excaliperful, the gorgeous Kira. Here we go. We've rounded third. We're heading for home tonight on Spaced Out Radio. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the chance at listening to our weirdness on a nightly basis. We really do appreciate it. Want to say hello and thank you to everyone who checks out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio, listening to our archives for free. It's all right there. And of course, our website, spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram, Spaced Out Radio Show. Speaking of the night that it is, let's warm up the Magic 8 Ball for some predictions. Let's get psychic and kinetic. We've had a woeful show, so let it continue. The Magic 8 Ball. <laughs> All right, our first question of the night comes from Adam. Got to be in our YouTube chat room to ask the questions here. Will I, as in Adam, see evidence of Sasquatch around Banff, Alberta in September? The answer from the Magic 8 Ball is reply hazy, try again. You're a newbie in that area. They may not want to show you, but you never know. You never know. Let's make sure what you do not do know what you don't. Learn your paths. Here's my suggestion. Learn the paths. Find the stories from people in the community once they warm up to you. And then in 2022, I think it's going to be your year, man. That's my prediction. B. Hoff is asking, Magic 8 Ball, is the earth really flat? Magic 8 Ball says... As I see it, yes. Are you making fun of us, Magic 8 Ball? Let's find out here. What does he say here? Yes and beyond. So in other words, Behoff, the Magic 8 Ball sees the humor in your question and is playing right into it. And no, the Earth is not flat. All right, Block Chic is asking... Will the UFO community come together to support each other as we reveal whatever the truth awaits? Magic 8 Ball says, out of fuel, try again later. In other words, no, no. There's too many egos, too many people in it for themselves. It ain't going to happen. 
Too many factions, too many spooks, not going to happen. Chad Smith is asking, will SOR ever get sick of Chad Smith? The Magic 8-Ball says, I am Chad Smith. I am Chad Smith. But no, seriously, the Magic 8-Ball says, infinitely, yes. But you know what? Everything runs its course, Chad Smith. And this one's going to take a while. This one's going to take a while. All right. Vinny is asking, was the cartoon Pinky in the Brain, loved that cartoon, based on a true story? You have my pity. Of course not. It's a cartoon, Vinster. <laughs> oh, I okay. Our radio listeners on terrestrial radio. All right, you may have to plug your ears for this one. Joe is asking. <laughs> oh, brother. I needed this question tonight, man. I really did. Joe is asking, is there an alien anal probe in my future? The answer is, it is decidedly so. Yes, you are going to get anal probed by aliens, Joe Smith, and you're going to love it. Just remember, I'm going to suggest right now, if you don't mind, all right, just for your own safety, because aliens can be a little rough. I don't know this part from personal experience, but I know it from people ta that I've talked to. When you go to bed at night, Joe Smith, tie a bottle of lube to you, because them aliens are coming, and they are liking what they are seeing, my friend. They are liking what they are seeing. All right, Kira is asking, does Dave have Sasquatch near his house? Well, we know Dave has a black bear by his house right now. My sources say no, and I'm going to agree with that, Kira, because the forest isn't too far away, but there's a lot of action around here, and with the fires and everything, it's really pushed things away. So <clears throat> I don't think they are here right now. No, I do not. And I agree with the Magic 8 Ball. Chris Mo in Austria is asking, Dear Magic 8 Ball, will I be able to get to Las Vegas to the big spaced out radio party? The answer is, when it happens, you better damn well be. Intel looks good. Chris Mo, the Intel looks good. All right, that looks good. I'm thinking now with... You know, we're running late in the year. We're two-thirds through 2021. Christmas is coming right around the corner. I hate to say the C word already because the minute you mention the C word in August, all of a sudden every Walmart has Christmas music playing the next day. Have you ever noticed that? So, yeah, we're going to make sure. We're going to make sure. We'll give you a good date. I'm thinking 2022, the way the world's going again. YJ lives in the Okanagan of British Columbia. Magic 8 Ball. Should I buy a bumper or buy a welder and just make my own? Ooh, that's a good question. All systems go. Just buy the bumper, man. Just buy the bumper. But if you're going to weld other stuff... Either way, it's a can't-miss option either way, YJ. It's a can't-miss option. Jenny is asking, will the aliens show up in February 2022? All systems go. We're going to get some aliens in 2022, Jenny. We're going to get some aliens in 2022. Joe wants to know, different Joe, Will Vinny ever, ever get a girlfriend? Vinny is one of our wrenches in our chat room on YouTube. Ask again later, Joe. Ask again later. Vinny's just not ready. He's not emotionally stable enough right now in order to do that. Andy, 
Jones, will the Bigfoot community Magic 8-Ball ever come together? Batteries are low. Absolutely not. They're as screwed up as a UFO field. Seriously. All right, Selena wants to know, will I ever meet a Sasquatch? Selena, that is, not me. Magic 8-Ball says, all clear. You're good to go, Selena. You know, you're good to go. Just make it happen. All right, Cousin Gary in Edmonton. Can I use my BB gun on a wasp's nest? I don't even need the Magic 8-Ball to say yes for that one. But Cousin Gary, we'll see what the Magic 8-Ball says. Come on. Don't count on it. Mm. Magic 8-Ball doesn't like that idea. Here's what I did, Cousin Gary, and your mustache. I used a spray bottle, just a regular dollar store spray bottle. I mixed uh, water and soap. It gave me plenty of hours of entertainment, killing wasps. I only got stung once in two years by doing this. And it's really fun because the minute the soap hits their wings, they can't fly anymore. And then what happens is they start moving the larva out. And then when you spray them, they crash land with the larva and they're done. Toast. Use the spray bottle. It's a lot more fun. You get a lot more vengeance on it and much more enjoyable. That's what I suggest you do, Cousin Gary. All right. Sandra. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Sandra. Was there a significance of dreaming of Kilimanjaro? Magic 8-Ball says, as I see it, yes. I don't know what that means, but... Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Bigfoot Anon wants to know, you ever heard of the Ochisi Pond Wildman Magic 8 Ball? Yes and beyond. I've never heard of it. You're going to have to fill us in on that one. But Magic 8 Ball knows all. Magic 8 Ball knows all. Super Duke from World Bigfoot Radio. Will Dave make it to Vegas in 2021? Yes and beyond. Maybe we will have our party this year. Maybe it'll be just a secret trip to scout things out. Don't know yet. Don't know. Aaron wants to know, does my cat really think it's a dog or is it trolling me? Let's find out. My sources say no. Your cat's just a jerk, man. Your cat's just a jerk. Let's go back to Kira. She has another question. Are the Sasquatch near her? Answer. Signs point to yes. Yes, gorgeous Kira. They are. Behoff. If we ask the same question three times, will you give the same answer, Magic 8 Ball? Out of fuel, try again later. Can't answer that for you. Can't answer that for you. Lynn would like to know, do tinfoil hats really connect to aliens, Magic 8 Ball? That's a good question. Answer, all clear. You're good. You're good and safe. Tinfoil hat. Use it. Wrap your head in it. Not the aluminum foil, the tin foil. You got to find the original tin. That's what you need to do. And we are caught up on questions. I will wait a couple seconds here before we end the Magic 8 Ball night. And see if there's any more questions. All right, Adam wants to know, we'll take a couple more. Have UFOs been following my rig? Ask again later, Adam. In other words, not recently. Not recently. All right. It's probably that time where we say goodnight to the Magic 8-Ball 
and hello to Captain Shirk and Shirky Poo's news. And this is how it ends. The news is always changing, which is why we bring you the SOR Newswire at the back end of every show where we get to the weird, the strange, the wacky, and sometimes the sad, because literally another music legend has passed away. I don't know if you heard the news or not. Charlie Watts from the Rolling Stones, their only drummer, passed away peacefully in a London hospital surrounded by family, says his publicist. Yeah, the Rolling Stones drummer and the band's irreplaceable heartbeat died at the age of 80, no cause of death given. Watts' publicist confirmed his death in a statement that reads, it is with immense sadness that we announce the death of our beloved Charlie Watts. He passed away peacefully in a London hospital earlier today, surrounded by his family. The statement referred to Watts as one of the greatest drummers of his generation and closed by requesting that the privacy of his family, band members, and close friends is respected at this difficult time. Watts' death comes several weeks after it was announced that the drummer would not be able to perform on the Rolling Stones' no-filter tour of U.S. stadiums. Charlie has had a procedure which was completely successful, but his doctors this week concluded that he now needs proper rest and recuperation, a rep said for the band. With rehearsal starting in a couple of weeks, it was very disappointing to say the least, but it's also fair to say no one saw this coming. It is hard to imagine the Stones without Watts even then, though, his light touch, singular rhythmic sense, and impeccable feel, as heard on canonical rock songs such as Painted Black, Gimme Shelter, and Brown Sugar, made him both the engineer that ran the engines forward of the Stones music and one of the most famous and respected drummers of all time. Keith Richards, who, how the hell is he still alive, said in 1979, Everybody thinks Mick and Keith are the Rolling Stones. If Charlie wasn't doing what he was doing on the drums, that wouldn't be true at all. You'd find out that Charlie Watts is the Stones. God bless him as he moves on to the next one. Here's another one. A pair of Minnesota teenagers doing a little gardening at a friend's house had a close encounter with a wandering black bear and the incident was caught on camera. 17-year-old Haley Nelson and 15-year-old Dory Arndt were working in the front garden at the Centerville home of friend Haley Nyberg when Nelson spotted what initially she thought was Nyberg's dog in the corner of her vision. We wanted money, so we decided to pull some weeds, and we were just pulling weeds, just talking, listening to some music, turn our heads, and we thought it was just a black lab. Nelson then took a second look, and to her surprise, realized that the animal wasn't a black lab at all, but a big black bear. Security camera placed in one of the home windows recorded as the girls fled toward the house and found the door was locked. So I'm pounding on the door, let us in, screaming our heads off, just waiting to get inside. And then Haley pokes her head around the corner. Nelson recalled Brian Nyberg, Haley's dad, opened the door and ushered Nelson and Arndt inside before going to get his daughter. I heard them screaming and my dad came outside and it was just like, why are you still out here? A bear just walked in our front yard. I'm like, what? Yeah, imagine that. Who has had that happen recently? Me. Me. And what do I do? I go chasing the thing. That's how stupid I am. Well, it's believed that tortoises are vegetarian. A newly released video seems to show otherwise. According to researchers, changes in the environment may have caused certain animals to change their feeding behaviors. As uh, this new footage that has been filmed on Fregate Island in the Indian Ocean shows a tortoise attacking and then eating a turn chick. Cambridge University released the video on various platforms where it called out the odd behavior for supposedly a vegetarian animal. Bad tortoise eating birds. But hey, probably got some fresh chicken legs, so why not? And finally, a 22 month old little girl has been found alive, thank goodness, after four days in a Russian forest and promised never to disappear again. Leodia Kuznina wandered off near her home in Smolensk, 
west of Moscow, prompting a search involving hundreds of people. She had no food or water and was eventually found covered in insect bites, but alive after one of the search parties heard her squeak. She's quite adamant she'll never run away from mom again, although quite how long she'll remember that promise, we have no idea. But at least she says so. Antonia Cusina says the toddler is being looked at at the local children's hospital, and the mother and daughter were in a playground outside the hospital waiting to be discharged. The alarm was raised after Liuta left the family's summer house last Tuesday. She had been playing outside with her four-year-old sister, but had wandered off into a nearby forest when her mother visited the neighbor and sister had followed. Yeah, 400 local volunteers took part in this very successful and very awesome recovery of this little girl. And let's hope that Sasquatch kept her safe. Thought of the Dave happens every night at this time where we ask a question on our Facebook and Twitter pages. Then read your responses on the air because we love the audience participation around here. Today's Thought of the Dave is as follows. With Charlie Watts passing, what is your favorite Rolling Stones song? Steam Train Mark in Australia. I can't go past Painted Black. And a close second, I can't get no satisfaction. Jules, Honky Tonk Woman. Mickle. Oh, no, that's terrible news. R.I.P. Charlie. Dystopia Drifter Dennis. Mother's Little Helper doesn't get enough recognition, in my opinion. Mark, such a sad day for rock and roll. Have it open right up because they heard him and knocking. Amy, painted black. Wait, Angie, because about Angie Bowie. Anthony, give me shelter. James, this is my favorite that James said. Sympathy for the devil. Chris loves Painted Black. Magic Torch was Gimme Shelter, No Contest, one of the coolest tracks ever. All right, that's good stuff so far. Becky, start me up. Jason, Emotional Rescue, Damn You Disco Haters, Falsetto Forever. Eric, Goodbye Ruby Tuesday. Angie for Eric, another Eric. Marty, 2,000 Light Years from Home. Keith. So many, but I will go with Under My Thumb. Chris, Shake Down Street. Byron, Wild Horses. Magnus, She's a Rainbow. Gary, Under My Thumb. Drew, that's a tough one, given the immense catalog that the Stones hat have. Off the top of my hat, Gimme Shelter, Midnight Rambler, Bitch, Paint It Back, Miss You, One Hit to the Body, Too Many to List. Kevin, Monkey Man, Michael, Miss You, Wild Horses for Joe, Beast of Burden for Nicole Sakic. Start Me Up for Gary the Dutchman. Wild Horses for Science Bomb. Uncle Dale and his power stash will get the final word on this one. I like the more harsh and gritty stones with lots of riffs and rants. So, She's So Cold. Street Fighting Man. Start Me Up. Shattered. Honky Tonk Woman. Brown Sugar. Jumping Jack. Flash. And Painted Black. Thank you to everybody participating in the Thought of the Dave. Thank you to Captain Shirk for the news. And, of course, all of you playing on the Magic 8 Ball and Robin McRae talking Sasquatch all night long. We got Mr. Ron Bumblefoot Thaw rocking in the background with Little Brother is watching. Bumblefoot is the official music of Spaced Out Radio. Rocking us in and out of every single show. Get your horns up for the guitar god himself. Special thanks to everybody listening in at home, at work, in your cars wherever you may be. Thank you to everyone in our chat rooms tonight on YouTube, LGAB, Revolution Radio, Twitch, Spreaker, the Facebook Space Travelers Club, and on Twitter. I know you're out there somewhere. Remember, this show is copyright by Spaced Out Radio and SOR Media Ventures Limited. Thank you so much for choosing to share your evening with us because together, my friends... We own the night. Mr. Bumblefoot, we need a favor. We need you to take us home. Yes, the Wu Train 
has docked for the night. But soon, my friends, we shall ride again. Your seats are always available. Your tickets never expire. And if you want to bring a friend, we've got room for them, too. Good night. I am stuffy. I don't know why. Thank you, gorgeous cosmic floor. <clears throat> okay. Um, got something on my mind I'm going to quickly say here. And hopefully I don't sound like too much of a jerk. Um, I'll add it like this. And I'll just say it again. All right. So there are a number of our listeners who who uh, listen to another show, okay, that used to be affiliated with us, but it no longer is. And I'm quite okay with that. Listen to whomever you want. It's your choice. Um, and every now and again, I know we have a lot of mutual listeners between that show and this one. All right, and that's a good show over there. It really is. And um, long story short, this show likes to make fun of us, make fun of me, call me a liar, and say we're buying followers, and then gives a lot of cheap shots to us usually. And one of our mutual listeners uh, had uh, tuned into that other show tonight. And apparently there was a bunch of, uh, not only the host, but a bunch of other people in the chat room who were insulting me and us and and uh, John Hudson, the UFO guy. All right. So you can really insult anybody that you want. Whoever. Do what you want. But if you're over there, if you're one of the listeners who has the benefit to listen to that good show, it is a good show, and then comes over to our room to listen, but if I find out that you're one of the people insulting us in that room, then you come play nice here, I'm not going to be nice. So that's not fair to me. It's not fair to this show. It's not fair to mainly your fellow chatters. Like I said, I have no problem with anybody listening to both shows. No problem whatsoever. I don't even care if you super chat that show and don't super chat ours or you super chat both shows or whatever. Don't care. You're allowed. It's your listening right to listen to whomever. But if somebody approaches me and says that you are insulting or taking part in insulting that my show or our show, uh, and then coming into our chat room that night. Don't come back, please. Don't need the headaches. Don't need the drama. And I'm not interested. I'm not interested. Okay. If you want to believe fake accusations, if you want to believe you know, fake commentary about SOR instead of uh, just asking me politely and you want to insult me or my show and then you come into our chat room and then play all buddy-buddy, doesn't work. Doesn't work. It's not fair. So I'm going to leave it at that. And uh, like I said, you as a listener have the ability and the, and the freedom to listen to Anybody that you want. And I don't care if you listen to the other show. I really don't. It's a good show over there. The host, when he's uh, when he's on par, I think he's a fantastic host. When he's not uh, worrying about dribble and bullshit. Okay? It's a solid, solid show. But don't come into our room and play the, the double thing. That That's not cool. That's not cool. And that's all I ask. And I know the majority of you probably don't, 
but there's always one or two. <clears throat> all right. It's all cool. It's all cool. So it's quite okay. It's quite, quite okay. So let's just leave it at that and uh, kind of go from there. If you're cool with that, I'm cool with that and leave it. I, I don't like talking about that other person um, or that other show. I don't tune in. I don't subscribe. <clears throat> I will never insult the other uh, host, you know, but that's just the way it is. <clears throat> right? Oh, Moon, it's very easy to see what, what is being said and what isn't. And I, you know, <clears throat> very easy. Hold on one second here. He is large and in charge tonight. Large and in charge. Uh, um, tonight show. If you're new here, don't forget. Oh, uh, he, is, uh, he is large and in charge tonight. Large and in charge. Steve Ed. Right there. That's where I need to go. <clears throat> All right. We're good. Maybe it is Chad Smith. You never know. I would hope that you're not, Fap. I would hope that you're not. <clears throat> We're just teasing. We're just teasing. Uh, let's see. I did go looking for the bear again tonight. <clears throat> Didn't see him. I like the bears. Bears are so smart and majestic. Uh, I'm trying to give up uh, smoking for uh, for everything. 
And uh, slowly but surely, I'm going to win the battle. <clears throat> and part of that battle is breaking the habits that you do have. That's one of our three. All right. Hey, the Ronald Penton. Uh, we love you, Fabster. We do. <clears throat> Ozzy, Rob, everything over in Australia kills you. Do you even have bears over there? Well, I get outside of the koala bear. But do you have bears over there? I don't think you do, do you? Good night, gorgeous Jenny. That's a weird one. That would be the end right there. Well, I think this is a fantastic question because um, this happens a lot and people don't realize that they can. Man, if you don't mind, right off the bat, before we get to more audience <laughs> questions. Well, I think this is a fantastic. Thank you so much for Space Down Radio tonight. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Really do appreciate. Let's go like this. Go here. Copy. Paste. <coughs> Good night, Jose. That's probably exactly what happened. Thanks, Vanner Smith. Appreciate you. Cousin Gary still around, or did he log out too? By the way, once again, a big thank you to uh, Jimmy Church for giving us a shout out, having a good laugh over calling me <laughs> out for chasing the bear before the show. I guess it showed up on his feed and he watched. So that was pretty awesome that he did that. Canadians. <clears throat> I'll tell you, if that bear, honestly, if that bear would have turned on us, I'd have been running like hell. Well, more like jogging because too big to run anymore.
What's the Vegas odds on Fap's head being shaped like Stewie from Family Guy? Or is he more like Mr. Mackey from, from South Park? I'm curious. Oh, there's Cousin Gary. Is Hot Cheryl going to trim the mustache? Do you allow her to tame that lip-bladed beast? Be honest, Cousin Gary. Don't mess around with us here. This is important stuff that we need to know. Because I will call Hot Cheryl. I have no problem calling Hot Cheryl. See if we can find something here. Hold on. Trying to find a good picture of uh, of uh, cousin Gary's mustache here. <clears throat> I could show to you guys. It is a power lip blade, people. A power lip blade. Oh, there's the impressive shot. There, I, I, there's the impressive shot. Hold on a second here. You guys want to check out a nice mustache. Look at that lip blade, people. Look at that lip blade. Look how, look how thick that is. Lots of, uh, you know, there's no real holes in it like mine. You know, comes down over the edges. Just a little bit of handlebar out there. Fantastic lip blade. Fantastic lip blade right there. You don't mess with that. That thing has a life of its own. That worm burner right there. Woo-wee. Gorgeous lip blade. Fantastic. Fantastic. Beautiful. Thank you, Lynn Sos. <clears throat> Hope Cousin Gary doesn't get pissed at me for doing that. But that is a fantastic mustache that needs to be shared with the world. Mm hmm That's right. That's a good comment right there, Andy Jones. Cousin Gary has the Tom Selleck going. Fantastic. I'll guarantee you right now, my cousin Gary's doing one of these. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lip blade. You are fantastic. Guaranteed. By the way, we will be making Chad Smith t-shirts. See, he did it twice. He did it twice. Yeah. Cousin Gary. 
I think Darren and I are the only ones who can't grow a proper mustache. Between you, my dad, and and uh, my uncle Dennis, you guys had power mustaches. You and Dad have power mustaches still. <clears throat> Oh yeah. Uncle Dennis had a good had a good mustache too. God rest his soul. But uh he had a good mustache too. Well, if you look at my mustache, you know, I, I've never been able to grow a good mustache. Never have. Maybe I'll try it one day just to see. I can never get that thickness. I got a very thin mustache. Oh, Chad Smith will get copies of the T-shirts, man. Absolutely he will. We'll make sure that happens. I can't wait to be rocking I'm Chad Smith on the strip of Vegas. Cousin Gary's going to bring his mustache down. Cousin Gary's mustache is so is so beautiful. It has its own passport. Oh, it's happening. Black Dragon's going to rock around in a Chad Smith t-shirt, too. I can tell. <clears throat> We're going to get an I am Chad Smith with a picture of a wrench on it. That's what we're going to do. I'd love to do a FAP t-shirt, but I couldn't fit his head on the material. Thank you, Super Duke. <clears throat> From World Bigfoot Radio. Appreciate you, buddy.
<laughs> Ron Shaw just sent me a picture of a bear going to screw up the corn harvest. Oh, yeah, they do that. That they do. Two nine zero eight six. And the other one is for nine two. There we go. Downloads have started. Cool. You want an I am Chad Smith shirt for hot Cheryl? <coughs> Let's see, what, what kind of font could we use for this? Let's go here. See what we can do for this. Uh, let's just create a picture. Business card cover. No, 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 none of that. All right, let's just make that bigger. See what we can play around with here for a few minutes. I don't want that. Let's go with. Um, uh, logo design. There we go. See if we can find something creative here. Oh, hold on. That's not going to work either. Hold on. <clears throat> Maybe we can find something good here. Hold on, what's that? Uh, what's that? Oh, there it is. All right. Oh, 
that might be too big. That might be too big. Hold on. I'm gonna find a proper one here. <clears throat> There we go. That's what we're looking for. Over here, upload this. And we'll go like this. Share here. Hey, give me two seconds, people. Open. Drop these in there. And I'll go here. And then we will just, I just got to load up this file here. go share screen all right let's just go like this all right so we gotta go I need a new font. That font sucks. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. We did that. Hold on. Let's change the color of that. Uh, where do we change the color here? They changed this all up. Uh, right here. Oh, I like that. I like that. Chad Smith is a wrench in our chat room. I like that. See what other fonts we can find here. <clears throat> that one's all right. Where is Chad Smith? I don't know. I, I'm feeling this. I am feeling this right now. How do you guys feel about that? I want to know. <clears throat> What other fonts can we get here? Nope, that's not the one. No. That one looks all right. Hi, Hidden Existence. Peppa H., how are you?
Yeah, I, I could send this to the graphic to the graphics team. Totally do that. Probably have to do that. <clears throat> but I think we're close. I think we're close. I think we're close. Anyhow, I'm going to say goodnight to all of you guys because I'm going to go off to bed. Tomorrow night on the show, we have Leslie Mitchell Clark. We're going to talk, excuse me, we are going to be talking uh, ET contact uh, and uh, hypnotherapy on, on, uh, on uh, ET contacts. So I'm going to uh, let you guys all go here. Well, big thank you once again to Ozzy Rob, Ozzy Steve, uh, Black Dragon, Tim, G West times two, Murray, uh, Adam, Ann, Vinster, Kira, Andrew, and YJ for the amazing super chats. We'll see you all tomorrow night, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, together, my friends, we own the night. We'll talk to you soon.